baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on the bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in hair, extra fruit haven brand. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but this grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stink Yeah, it took some hard work, but my love play a huge role And they say that it don't, when they're feeding you fool's gold And if I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know without a doubt while on the globe and Even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dango carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to call Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world all that stress ain't saving me fear though I swear to God I'm trying uh, They pushing the demons down my esophagus Screaming the easy life, what I want all of ways Praise, wait up holidays, tell me that love is the answer Just to boost this economy My more sell now, but I ain't following I ain't a hollow man, I'm full of them fall winds Take it all with a tall grin, and if you feel it do it with me and just sing what the song says. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Hello, hello, hello. This is Unsolicited, and I am Security Boss. <laughs> hello, everyone. This is Monday. You all had a fantastic weekend. Today has been an excellent day, and I thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for being here. You know we got to say hello to everyone. Make sure everybody's nice and comfortable. But before we do that, we have to make some announcements. Okay? First announcements. I told you the gear is here. Go to my channel. The globe is in the top right hand, right corner. Excuse me. Click the go globe and see what's there. SB Nation gear. Check it out. Hopefully this week I'll get to model it myself. And I'll, you know, I'll let you know exactly what I think. And then, of course, you too. All right. So that takes care of that. Also, this weekend, the 22nd, which is Sunday, is the first show of the standard. So I need you guys to tune in for that. I need you all to be tuning in. I'm not going to tell you any more yet, but I will. Coming soon, I will tell you more. But just remember, Sunday, this coming Sunday, May 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern, will be the first show of the standard, 6 p.m. Eastern. And it's going to be fantastic, guys. I just want y'all to, you know, put that on your calendar, you know, you know, just check it in there. And then we're going to talk about it a little bit more this week. But I just want you to know that it's coming this coming Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern, the standard. Also, we are now receiving and would love to receive applications, not quite applications, just interest in bachelorettes for this new bachelor that we have for I Choose You. Make sure you go to sbshow2020 at gmail.com. Yes, sbshow2020 at gmail.com. I need y'all to be there. All right. So if I forgot something, Y'all know about the Money Line song. Y'all know why we do it. And guess what? 999 gets the Money Line song. And it's like this. <laughs> I caught Mr. Boss off the dark. There it is. Y'all know why we do it. Give me my going up, need no decline. Money line. I'ma run it every time. Give me my going up, need no decline. Yeah, yeah. So 
listen, guys, make sure when you're coming into the live, you're giving us a thumbs up. Help me remember. We love it when you're here. Make sure you give us a thumbs up because, you know, we're trying to give you the most entertainment, the most important information, and we're trying to give some solutions. I don't know if anybody else is doing that, but you're getting that over here at Unsolicited. So make sure you're giving us a thumbs up, even for the attempts. All right. But for now, before I bring up my co-host, I am going to say hello to a few people. You know, I love y'all. I mean, my chat is outstanding. Stephen Day. Hello. Bethany. How you doing? Patrice. Good to see you, big bad boy. Where you been, brother? I ain't seen you in a couple of days. You know, I've been asking about you. How you doing? Mr. Steele, good to see you. Mr. Bryant, thank you guys for all being here. Um, who was Mr. C? Thank you for being here. I'm so glad that y'all are here today. Brittany B, you got to help me out. But anyway, we're going to continue. Oh, who was it? I forget someone. Listen, guys, I'm having all type of glares today. So I got my contact. So if I miss you, please forgive me. If I misread one of these, you know what? My co-host going to help me. AL, how are you? Hey, I saw you this morning. <laughs> Good to see you. But um, my co-host going to help me out today because some reason I can't get these contacts straight today. But it's okay. We're going to, y'all going to, you know, we're going to work it out. But for now, let me bring up my co-host. Y'all all know him as Black Man Unfiltered. <laughs> hey, Black Man. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Nothing too much. I'm, I'm getting all kind of glares today. You think, is it possible to put your contact in inside out? Is that possible? It is. Uh, it could be. That might be what I've done because I tell you, I'm getting all types of glares. So anyway, we're going to work it out. But how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself, Shug? Doing good, doing good. You know, look, you know what? The last time I was with you, it was fiery hot, but it was good. It was good. Yeah. We can't talk about it. But listen, we left with a statement, and that brings us to today. Because I told you, I said, no, slow down. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about it. But before we get into it, we're going to bring everybody up to um, where we were um, on Friday. And then we're going to, because, you know, remember, we it kind of got away from where we started somewhat, but we're going to take it back and then bring it forth. And then we're going to come with you and you're going to have an opportunity to say and tell us exactly you and I going to talk about this before right. we open up the lines. Okay. And then of course we'll open up the lines and then we'll go from there. Okay. But um, today's topic is what is today's topic? Exactly. The black man solution to getting the family back. The black man solution to getting the family back. I like that. You like that. I love it. I do too. And that is such a, if we can figure that out. <laughs> We need to put it in a bottle and Come just on. share it. But, you know, this all started because um, I did an interview mm -hmm. with uh, We Need to Talk. And he put a clip of that interview on um, Instagram. And remember, I got 100 plus and counting. Mm. <laughs> it's probably 200 plus now and counting negative comments from young single women about being single mothers. I think I said something to the fact of it's not time to celebrate single motherhood. Yep. Jump uh, all up and down my back. Did you see it? You went to see Did you see uh, it? Yep. Awarding bad behavior. Yep. And they mad because you don't want to award bad behavior. It's not time for it. You know, when you, when you think about what's getting ready to happen, you're bringing a child, son yeah. or daughter into this world exactly. and you by yourself. Now, I'm not talking about co-parenting. I'm not talking about husband, wife, divorce. We're not talking about any of that. You know what I'm talking about when I say single mom, right? Yeah. Some of them, some of some people call them baby mamas, but I'm not going to disrespect them that way. Right. They're single mothers, and I'm not going to take anything away from it because the job is hard enough. So I'm gonna keep it where it is. They are still single mothers, and that's what I'm talking about. Right. I'm talking about the women where the dad is not there, and they don't have that type of support from the other half of the person that made that baby that other half is gone so i'm talking about them and i was just saying you know we don't need to rejoice right now we need what we need right now is a village or some people with some wisdom to sit and talk to us and tell us what we got to do you know what's gonna happen what can i expect you know how am i gonna get through i mean how am i gonna get through this by myself all those things you know and also if you went back and looked at the whole reel it actually was me saying that them 100 plus women, they, they're supporting that because they're part of the sisterhood. But I bet you when that young woman is by herself, they ain't nowhere around. They ain't helping. When she need them, nowhere. So, again, they got to be by themselves. So that's what kind of clicked this thing off. So 
Is there anything else you want to add to what happened on Friday before we get straight to the solution? Well, let me say one more part. I think I'm hearing from you, black man, because for me, you and um, Bolo had a heated conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to just tell you the truth. I kind of feel like y'all saying the same thing. And I think y'all kind of approaching it from two separate directions. But I still feel like ultimately y'all saying the same thing. Okay. But I want you to go ahead and give us, you tell me what you think. And then I want you to tell us about the solution. And then you and I going to bounce off on that. And then we're going to open up the chat and um, drop the link and see if somebody else wants to add to this. So go ahead and tell us what you think. Right. Well, well I, I, I'll say this. Last night I had the opportunity to um, uh, listen to my guy, Sir Hill Speaks Network. I uh, had a good show last night. And Sir Hill said something last night that just sat, sat by me and wouldn't get up. And, I, <laughs> and I'm still thinking about it today. Um, you are so old, dude. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I was raised by older people, so I, you know, you gotta, but anyway, it, it just, it, you know, it. Um, he said that, you know, in society today, uh, our sisters, our black women, um, they have decided that if the black man's not right, we're gonna go to the government and tell the government the black man's not right, and we're gonna get child support, and then we're gonna get all the other stuff, the Section Eight, the the housing, all that, right? But then Sir Harris said something real good on the other end of it. He said, but then the same government is trying to control their bodies, what they do with their bodies. He said, so on one end, the women are saying, telling the government, you can't tell me what to do with my body. But then the next day, you filing for Section 8 from the same government that's trying to control your body. Right? And so it's like a contradiction thing. It's, it's a contradiction thing. For me, mm, mm, mm. for me, if I, my, Going back to, like you said, I'm old, but going back to some of the older people and listening to them growing up under the under the tree uh, at the house, listening to these older people, you come to understand, my grandmother always used to say, if, if nobody's talking about you, if nobody's got nothing to say about you, um, then they don't care about you. They don't really care about you at all. When you see these men have these concerns, I want to see a black woman like this, and I want to see a black woman like this, and I want to see... We got to stop saying this complaints. We got to stop saying men complaining. That's all they do is complain about black. No, these are concerns, right? These are concerns. We're not here. We're, we're, we're saying, listen, there are certain things you don't have to do, baby girl. You don't have to go out and show your body to everybody, right? Angela Bassett is 65 years old, one of the finest 65-year-old women I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely. And when have you ever seen her out with her breast out or her butt out or right. she's dropping it like it's hot? Or doing something that that's demeaning herself, knowing that she has two, she has twins that mm -hmm. are going to grow up and see her on the internet, see her on social media. She's one of the biggest names in Hollywood right now, and ain't never been naked. We we and then our our young ladies, you know. And I was listening to the song the other day. Uh, Cardi B said, mm -hmm. "I don't cook, I don't clean, but I still got the ring." But then you go over to her social media page. She says, cleaning up today. She's sweeping the floor in the house, mopping. <laughs> right? She's cooking yep. for the kids. Yep. So she's she's living a, a different life, but she's telling all the women, do what you want. But she's over here taking care of her, her family and her husband. Right? So I think with the influence, I think it's a horrible influence on our women. And I think uh, women are just, um, they're gullible by it. They, they get gullible. Um, I think men used to be the same way. I think it used to be the reverse. The reverse, but men are waking up now because I'm looking at these numbers and it just it makes me so proud of black men to know that 33 percent of more black men are going to uh, that are going to college and are finishing college. Um, the prison population has dropped uh, 20 percent uh, for black men, um, and 51 percent. The CDC jumped in there and said 51 percent of all men, black men, are in the homes with their children. They are taking care of their children. So over half of black men are taking care of their children. And then Ayala came behind that and said, hey, listen, these black men are getting together. She said, women, we got to catch back up. She said, we used to be in the forefront. We used to be the ones that that matured more than the men. Now we got to catch back up to them. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And now we got to catch up. She said, what are we doing, ladies? What are we doing? And so that that's all I have to say. Um, I, I just think that it, when men are not complaining, they have a concern. Well, let me add to what you're saying. I've had my <laughs> I have I've had my introduction to today's modern woman. 
just a short time ago. Oh, uh, yeah, you sure did. And and they are rough. They They're hard. rough. We can't deny it. Now, what's the cause of all this? I would say it was definitely influences. I definitely would say it's the feminist movement. Um, and it's a lot of them, but this is it's a lot of them, black man. Just like you said, Cardi B had a song saying, I don't cook, I don't clean. But then she had on the Instagram over there, you know, with the with the mop and sweeping up the right. floor. Right. So a lot of those women have um are waking up and realize that they've been sold a bill of goods. Yep. And this is so true. A lot of them are saying, Wow, I've 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 I'm wrong, you know. The women who are leading us, we waiting on this. We waiting on the second part of what we supposed to be doing, and all of them married the Cardi B, the Nicki Minaj, all of them, all them girls that they've been following are married, married. and they got themselves waiting for the next anthem, right? Yep. So a lot of them have said, you know what, I'm wrong. I, I mean, I, how can I get this right? And I think what what we're saying is those. What I'm saying, those are the ones I'm trying to talk to. But I realize I'm gonna have to go out there in that war zone to get to those, and I'm a, and and, it, and it's obvious because I did have a hundred plus dislikes, but there were quite a bit of oh I kind of understand what she's saying mixed in there, you know. So, um, I don't know what happened earlier today. I don't That's the second person that asked that question. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, she guys, she's talking about the show from last Friday, guys. She's oh yeah, we, we're that happened today. Up, yeah, we're picking up from last Friday's show. Um, but if you got something you want to share, we definitely want to know what it is. Absolutely. But um, and, and oh, I, shout out, shout out to those um people in Buffalo, New York. Oh my God. Oh my. Yeah, that was awful. We didn't uh, do our news catch up today, Black yeah, Man. Yeah, I know. I know. I just thought about it too. Uh, they. I, I was watching uh, before I got on. It was uh, it was racially uh, influenced. Oh yeah, yeah, and he was um, not mentally ill. Well, I guess he kind of is, but it wasn't. He wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. He did it intentionally, and he was planning on doing some more. Did you know that? Yes, ma'am. He was going to another location. And you oh. know what? And that's security boss. I know you're in the business. Yep. This is the thing I'm about this, and we can get back to what we were talking about. But this is the thing that upsets me: the place that he went in and shot those, and I mean, and just start spraying. Yeah. Um, they had a big old sign up there, the penal code up there saying that you can't take one in the store with you. Mm. Got a big old sign up there with the X through the thing instead of penal code, whatever. You can't have firearms inside the store. My thing is this. The person that's going to do the deleting, they don't give a damn about that sign. <laughs> he that's started out in the parking lot. I think he killed some out in the parking lot before he even got in there. You didn't see those holes in those. Um, He had big gun. You didn't see the holes in the window. Yeah, and, and see that's the thing, and so I, the I, man, look, I'm I take mine everywhere I go. I got one on my ankle, one on my hip, and uh, one fully loaded in the trunk. I ain't, I'm listen. I'm not. If, if he go start spraying while I'm in the store, I'm gonna. I'm, I gotta get him out of there. He gonna yeah. be gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't get but one shot. You know that. Yeah, so that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's all I need. Yeah, he um. No, nah, he started out there in the parking lot. He was gonna do what he needed to do, and you know, I. Or what he wanted to do, I should say. Wouldn't wouldn't right. nothing gonna stop him? That sign on the wall, nobody cared about that. I mean, right. th th did somebody say that was a no? Anyway, we're not. No, that didn't yeah. matter. He, for some reason, said he had. And then it, what's this thing right here? When they ask you, are you guilty? You say no. What he said, not guilty. He pleaded not guilty. Yeah. What? what? Insanity. Oh, he did already say he was insane. Yeah, yeah. That, no, he's his lawyer. Oh my god. Anyway, um, gosh, oh my, I, I pray for them. Ten of them, ten, ten, ten. But listen, it's a sad case. But you know what? That's a real thing. We we, we here now. We're talking about black women, and we're talking about black, black men, and we're talking about uh, often we talk about men in the protection. And like you just said, it, there's not going to be many women that know that you don't get but one shot. Right. Most of us don't even know anything about a weapon. Yeah. So we need our men to protect us. And I'm agreeing totally with you. There is a new group of men out here now that are definitely paying attention, that are more involved in their kids' lives. They they are they in the homes and they're doing what they're supposed to do, even if it's co-parenting. They're doing yep. Yep. it. Even if we haven't gotten them married yet, they're doing it. I see it crystal clear. Um, But we're getting on the women. There's going to be some women that we don't, that won't get it. They're going to be by themselves. And, and you, if, if a war should break out, they may, they may not make it. You and, and you, and you, and you just said it. You said you have to go into, and it's a shame you had to say that security ball. When what? you said that I cringed, 
you said I would have to go in, I would have to to find those good women. I would have to go into a war zone to go get them. Oh yeah, it's true. I mean, I'm. I- and, and, I told you, I felt like I felt like on Friday we were all kind of saying the same thing. It's just the approach, um, because guess what? I still feel like men are the easiest to talk to. I feel like men are the ones that are easy, easier to adapt to what is needs to be done. Does that make sense to you? Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying to you. And my being here this short time on YouTube speaking to men we may have some um, Pookie and Ray Rays right now. And I'm, I'm speaking life and some value into these Pookie and Ray Rays. And I believe a lot of them might turn around. It may, they may, they might have been 20 when they made the mistakes and now they're 25. Or they may have been 18 when they made the mistakes and now they're 26 or 28. Now mm-hmm. they're more mature and they're ready to um, make amends or turn their lives around. So we cannot let them just go. Because they made a mistake. You have to help them and be an example for them to say, okay, look, you did this, you did that, you walked out, you're not taking care, but you, it's time for you to go back and take care of them now. I, I think, I think, it, like we just talked about influence, I think those good women that you say you may have to go in and the yeah. war's on and get, yeah. I think influence has the influence has his foot on the neck of the good women. Absolutely. Because, because some of those women want to tiptoe out and be like, oh, security boss, help me. Yep. As, soon, as soon as they reach out for help, the influence gonna be like, uh, I know damn well you're not going against the grain or going against the code. You're right. You're exactly right. I agree with you. So that brings us to what what can we do? Because I'm I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna try to be that example. But I gotta tell you the truth. I think the I think the example. Oh, excuse me. I'm gonna be that example. But as far as the solution goes, we gotta we gotta talk to both. You're you the man who have taken on your kids. You went and got your kids, and you say they're coming with me. Exactly. You are an example of a good man. Exactly. You got to stay that example. And you got to share that with other men and how you did it. Right. And, and what you had to do to whatever the, the process was, you know, right. you got to walk them through it. Me as a woman, I got to go into the war zone. The numbers don't look good, but I still have to put myself out there and say, ladies, I need y'all to hear me. We need these men. We need black men. We need to value them. We need their protection. What if a war jump off? What y'all gonna do? Right, and that's the thing. What? Listen, thing because we headed towards a lawless society. But black men, I need your help, though. How? Okay, we understand that they foul. <laughs> we we don't even have to say it anymore. We see it all the time. How do we fix that? Uh, this well, is the solution. This is the first thing because that's where we left. You, that's where we left it. How do we fix the right. woman? Well, well, let me say this. I think mm-hmm. FX did a wonderful job, guys. If you watch TV, um, I don't, I don't know how I get all this stuff in, but I, <laughs> I happened to uh, hear about an epi- uh, watch. I was up one day and I saw this preview for this TV show about women and men, and FX created this show called Mr. X, and okay. in this TV series, they did the whole series is about one day all the men were walking around Earth. And at a drop of a dime, every man on earth passed away and it was left just to the women to run. Wow. And they showed the effects of how the world would look with women running it when they had no expertise in keeping the power plants running. They had no expertise of of keeping the building running. Who's going to go down and work on the plumbing, keep the plumbing from backing back up? Who's going to go out there and plant these? Who's going to go out there and do this? And they show an entire infrastructure failure. Correct. Because no men existed anymore. And women were, they, and then the women started deleting themselves. Each other, Oh, yeah, it's called The Why. There it is. Patrice, thank you. The show was called Why? The Last Man. There we go. I'm sorry. There it is right there in the chat. So, yeah. So, when you go watch that, it's a, it shows the entire infrastructure failure because all the men disappeared. There were no men, no military men. There were no men to build. There were no men to plant. There were no men to go out to sea to bring in the fish and the, and the seafood. There were no men to run the power plants. There were no men to run the construction companies. And the infrastructure failed miserably. And so women, and, and right now women are saying, we don't need no man. And, you know, and all these different groups, girl, we don't need no man. We can stick together. We can do this. Oh, okay. But that building that you're living in, that apartment that you're living in, you didn't, a, a woman did not build that. The man did. You, I agree with you. But what do we do? How do we get? How okay, so let me ask you this. I I, I asked you this a couple days back. I, you know what? It might have been last Monday. Yeah. Um, I do understand that men not have been held account. We're gonna say held accountable for a lot of things. Men yeah. have. 
been held accountable, whether they were accountable or not, we right. they have been held accountable, exactly. right? Exactly. We're bringing on that. Okay. The way the laws are set right now, the women are not going to be held accountable that way because it's like you said, they're the ones that are now with the kids. They're the ones now that are mostly responsible for the kids and the rearing of the kids. Um, so the responsibility and the accountability needs to be on them. And they pretty much going to do what they want to do because the men are not there. Right. Right. So what do we do about that? How do we put this thing together? And I want, cause, cause black man, I'm, I'm here willing to, to, to hold the women accountable for the bad behavior, but I don't know if that's the answer per se. I think first we need to, we need to some kind of way build them up before, because I, don't, I really don't think they see themselves. I really think that they're acting out of total frustration of being by themselves. But before you answer that question, hold on, Mr. Nark, how are you? Nark perspective. Listen, black man, I may need your help because like oh, I, I, I said, kind of gla glares. Um, yeah. It says, I think women are afraid to ask for protection because they have to be um, yeah. vulnerable and they are afraid to be vulnerable because of, because us. of us taking advantage of them when they were. They were. Mm, I like that. Let's talk about that for a minute. But you get the money line song. And thank you for being here. So, so black man, he has something there. So it brings me to this. There is a lack of trust and we already know that, but I'm seeing the examples of the men. They're standing up. They're in place. They're doing what they're supposed to do. How do we get the women to see this? Now, there's more women than there are men. We already know. There's going to be some that's totally lost. We already know. But how do we get the ones that can be saved? How can we get them to the men that are looking for wives and the women that are looking for husbands and put this thing together? So we can't get back to the nuclear family and people and, and, and try to correct some of this. What can we do about the women? What can we, what can be done? Um, I think that we got to stop. We got to stop planting the roses and the poison ivy in the same garden. I think that I um, the roses and the poison ivy in the same garden. Okay. Break that down for me. And, and, what, and what I mean by that is I think that um, we have good women like yourself. When you told your story about, and, 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 yeah, you are you're a prime example of security boss. When you told your story about how you and Mr. Boss had to take a five year leave away from family, right? Absolutely. And you mm -hmm. said your mom had some very choice words and some things to, to say about your marriage and the man that you chose and the man that chose you, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the poison ivy. You were the rose. And if and, and imagine if you didn't go take that five year break and you were still planted in the same garden. How those, how that, how that, if you don't watch, if you ain't from the country, you ain't gonna understand this. I'm a country boy. When you put, when poison ivy is in that rose garden and it, it, it'll wrap itself around those roses. And when you go to get those roses, you'll start breaking out and you'll wonder why, man, these beautiful flowers breaking me out. No, the poison ivy has wrapped itself around something beautiful and made it poison. And that's the point that I'm making. If you took a break from that, you say, you know what? I'm gonna uproot these roses because that's what you can do in the country. You go and you updig the roots. And you cut the roses down and you take the root and you go put it somewhere else and they grow perfectly. And so that's what you did. You took a five year hiatus and said, you know what? I'm going to get my life right. I'm going to get me and my husband going to work. We're going to build and we're going to get that's what that needs to take place. I think we got a lot of bitter grandmothers because, you know, grandmama now is 50, 50, right? Grandmama 50, uh, mama uh, 35, child 17, right? So we so now we, we're dealing with. Uh, bitter grandma, bitter great grandma, bitter mama, and they're instilling this into their children. Girl, don't you trust no man. Girl, get you a separate bank account. And now you're confusing the roses. The roses are starting to get wrapped in it. And then when a man go to choose the rose, he get he get he he get he getting broke out. It's bumped all over. <laughs> but let me say something about that because you onto something, and I'm following you. But let me tell you something that was very important because my mom was the influence. She was my direct influence because she was a wife. Exactly, she was my mother. But listen to something. Listen, we got to slow down and say this because this is what's important. Mm -hmm. I trusted my husband. 
I trusted the man. Mm. So despite it, beloved. what my mom did and said, I trusted my husband enough to say, you know what? I'm getting ready to take my rose bush and plant it on the other side Come of on, North man. Carolina. And I'm going to let the wild stuff and the weeds stay down here mm -hmm. until my rose bush is firmly blooming <laughs> over here in another part of North Carolina. Exactly. But see, that's the point right there. I had a man that I saw something different in and I trusted it. I trusted my husband. He, he whatever he needed to do, he did up until that point for me to say, you know what? Even if I lose, I'd rather lose on this side than to lose on this side. So exactly. that's what we that's what we need to give to other women. That's what we need. So that's why I always say we need to plug the value into the men so they know that y'all are so valuable and y'all know y'all can um be the leader or be the head or whatever it needs to be. So those ones that we pluck out know that they can trust you to lead them. So we can get to this. So you can take that five year uh, hi five hi years. <laughs> hiatus away from that influence, whether it's mother, grandmother, um, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, whatever it is, girlfriends. Cause at this point, guess what? I honestly felt like I had no choice. I got to make this work. Do you hear what I just said? Cause I had nothing but me and this man, of course, in God. So I felt like I, I have to make this work because I, I made this my goal. Uh -huh. and I trusted what I had, what I trusted the investment. Right. Since <laughs> men, men like to make marriage and invest, you know, a business, I trusted it. So I gave it all. Right. right. So right. how do we get other women to this point and for the men to accept that role because it's big it's big i didn't know everything he didn't either but there was a that was a lot on him not knowing because we both were learning as we go and it's a different man this time because y'all have a lot of influences also right and and i will say this because i see robbie put something in the chat that that fits right with what we're saying uh good, good evening robbie how you doing sweetheart uh, it says, are we going to act like, let me go back up to it. Uh, it says, are we going to act like women haven't been devoted and men have, haven't have destroyed the trust? That is absolutely 100% correct. But what happens is, Robbie, is this, let's take it like a slavery thing. Slavery happened to great grandma. It didn't happen to grandma, but great grandma put that poison into grandma. And that grandma got the same fear as great grandma, and she's not even going through what great grandma went through. And nothing ever happened. The same thing happened to me, Robbie. He right. He, my mom married my dad. I, my husband was not my daddy, but she wanted me to know everything. Well, not everything, but, but it wasn't good. Some things were not good for her, but she still was a wife, right. but, but it spoiled her mindset against men. And she did not want me to experience any part of it. But I knew that my husband was not my daddy and I took a chance, uh -huh. but I trusted my husband enough to do so. That's what we're talking about. That's how, how do we get, we're not saying it didn't happen. It very well did, but don't allow somebody else's experiences and influences to keep you from what is for you. And that's what we're talking about. We're trying to figure out how do we pluck out those rose bushes yep. and say, listen, girl, this is a new man. Cause it's a new man. Robbie, it's a new man. These men these days are not all come on y'all, not all, but right. these men these days are plugging in. Right. Black man got his kids. Come on. How many of you knew of your grandma and your great grandma? Uh, man, got, my daddy got six illegitimate ones that my mama knew, maybe knew or didn't even know anything about by one woman. Who does that? And I'll say this about black women, especially back in the day. Th those women back in the day, there was some strong black women. Let me tell you why. <sighs> Half of the stuff that men think that women didn't know, especially back in the day, they knew about it. And I guarantee you, your mother, uh, security boss, was smart enough to know. She knew. She knew about those she kids. She knew something was going on. You think yes. she knew about all of them? Yes. Hi, somebody. Huh. Anyway, let's do this super chat. Hold that thought. Just hold mm -hmm. it because I just can't hold that. Hold that thought. Let's do this. Um, NARC perspective, NARC's perspective says women need us to. Ooh, stand in, stand I got, on. I got you. I got you. Me, yeah. Women need us to stand on our principles. They constantly seek security from us. They want us to be the solid rock, and because we made them disposable, they no longer feel safe. Again, Ooh. Nark, that goes back to what we just said. 
yes, we have men have done that to women, but the women that have been hurt, they're using that hurt to hurt others. And so what they're doing is they're saying, listen, this man took me through with hell. Like, like security boss was just saying, her mom went through this situation with her dad, and she took that stuff from that happened with her dad, and she said, no, I'm going to give you, I'm going to pour this into my daughter so my daughter can look at the same, look at her husband the same way. And security, all, men, all men. Yeah. yeah all all men. Men. Yeah. yeah. Ain't none of them no good. Yeah. And now that security boss said, you know what? I'm going to make a choice. Mama, I know you were hurt. I know what you went through. How about this? And I don't know if this happened or not, but this is for this is just in a general concept right now. How about this, Mama? I know what Daddy did to you. I know Daddy had some illegitimate children. How about we get you the necessary help that you need to move forward? And then while you're getting that help, Mama, I'm going to be the example to choose a man, and I'm going to be the example with my husband, and I want to be the better part of that generation and not be cursed from the generation that you came through. Black man, what you talking about? That don't happen. That's not a real discussion in our community. That no. maybe was now you talking about my mom now talking to me. No, no, no. You you got the, you you missed one part. They don't my par our parents, mine, they didn't get it wrong. They knew everything. Mm -hmm. But there was no conversation about what they said. It was gonna be the way that it was. So exactly. if I say to you that men ain't mm, they not right, and as you gonna believe we're it, we're not gonna have a conversation about it because I know better than you, right? Because I done been here, remember? And, family, and, and how many families have been broken up because women have chosen to to follow their man? How many mothers have turned their backs on their daughters because they chose to follow their husbands instead of their instead I of them? Know. I, I don't know because I I'm, I'm on the opposite side. But listen, we got a money line song. We gotta go. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Money line. I'm a Thank you, NARC. Thank you for being here too. Money line. I'm a runner every time. Give me mine. Going up, we know the kind. Yeah, yeah. So listen, guys. This is an awesome time to let you know that when you're coming into live, we thank you so much for being here. But make sure you're giving us a thumbs up as you come in, and we definitely appreciate you being here. NARC um, perspective. I am in really loving your comments. Um, you got it. You get yeah, it. Great, great now, how do we how do we process this and give it to others? Because guess what, black man? I trusted mine and it worked out perfectly or uh, very well for me. When I go to a single mother, what happened with her was the man was exactly the way the mother said he would be. So what I do, what do we do? So yeah. she's living it. See, I, I I got I got it right. Mm -hmm. I got it right. Yeah. Or what I didn't get right. Well, let's say it like this. I didn't get it right the first time. I was fooled. But the second time, but but when I messed up the first time, I said, "Oh, never again." So the second time, I counted for the first time. I said, "We're not going to go down that road again." And so the second time, I got it right. Mm -hmm. So that didn't have to happen to me anymore. But now we got single mothers out there where they're they're just to say they're they're participating just like their their grandmothers and their mothers told them they would they said they're not going to be there and that's their experience that's their actual life so they didn't get it right right how do we change their mindset for what the life that they're actually living to let them know look that ain't all of us we right. got a different man now how right. do we change it i think how enough do i don't think enough people and like i said security boss it, it's amazing to me to just you know, I'm glad we're having this conversation. It's amazing to me that you, yourself, you're the only example these men use in these YouTube streets. See, that, that I don't use, they don't use nobody else's name. I, I've been over at, I've been over at Great Peel Podcast, and I've heard Angela say, you know what, security boss, she is the, she's winning. She's married. They've been married for, I've seen, I've heard him say that. I went over to Anton's channel. Security boss, Mr. Boss, they're married. Sir Hell Network, they're married, they're doing well, they're winning. Everybody's talking about security boss. When is there going to be another security boss? You can't do it by yourself, right? It has to be a team effort. Okay, but in the meantime, you're right, and thank you. And anybody who wants to use me as an example, I have been married, this year will be 27 years, and I did go through a process, and great people asked about that five-year process. Right. Great, you know, it was one of those things that we just said, you know what, this is how it's got to be. We can't allow 
the noise. We can't allow the trash. We can't allow these influences to penetrate this foundation because this foundation at this time was not strong enough. See, my so prime example, to... look at it. So see, there go great peel right there. Speaking of the man, so no, here had, is a great no, example. A question. I'm glad you're here. But we had to, we had to uh, fortify. <laughs> we had to fortify that foundation in order to really take on the world. So, you know, it's a real thing. I hear people all the time talking about their families and going to talk to y'all. You know, I can't tell everybody what to do, but when I hear women say that they're going to talk to um, their mothers and fathers about certain things, I kind of cringe a little bit. Cause I'm thinking if you got your own relationship, you need to work it out with that man. Hey, Rita, Rita, Rita and your aunt, you need to work it out with that man because, um, those outside influences, sometimes y'all, they're not good. And I don't know if anybody sees me as an outside influence. I guess I am, but I'm only telling you to rely on the relationship that you've created with your man. I'm not telling you to go get something from somebody else that may have a negative um, outlook on the opposite sex. You know, if somebody's talking negative about a man and you and you are having problems with one, are you in a relationship one with one? Then that's not the person you want to talk about. Talk to also. I heard some people this weekend negatively speaking about marriage. I'm thinking like, what in the world? How, how, what, how, how do we do this? How do you speak negatively, negatively about marriage and about how it doesn't work because you're not willing to make it work. And, and you know what though? And I'll say this. Oh, and this is, this is the thing in our community guys. We, and I, I think security boss, what needs to happen is that we need to come to re to a reality here. I think we're living in a delusional world. And I think nobody wants to be held accountable. Like you said, men have been held accountable whether they do it or not. Uh, they've been held accountable for years. We have to tell our black women, we have to sit them down and say, hey, baby, listen, princess, beautiful, my, my beautiful daughter, my beautiful niece, whatever the situation may be. Over 70% of babies born in our community come from single mothers. Yeah. 70%. Look at that number. 70%. That means we don't, that means what we need to do is we need to let, we need to get women back to saying, I value me. I value myself enough not to go get pregnant and have my child grow up alone because I needed to bust a nut. It's simple. It's, it, 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 it's not simple, but it is. Right. I, I needed to feel good. We sound like Jada in these streets. I needed to feel good, girl. He wanted to give it to me. Oh, and I seen him. I just wanted to have sex with him. But and guess what? Black man, that's what we're talking about. OK, so listen, the men are on track, are on track, excuse me, on track, and they're doing what they're supposed to do. Exactly. How can we have enough empathy and compassion for the women who apparently have the appearance of being totally lost. Mm -hmm. They're lost. How do we do that? But before you answer that question, can you read uh, Mr. Freezy? How are you? Mr. Freezy, what's <laughs> going on, my guy? Can you read his uh, chat, $10, $10 super chat. Uh, he says, uh, security boss is the real deal. All black women need to be subscribed. Let's make it mandatory. <laughs> See, listen, this is the thing. Y'all make sure when you're coming in, make sure you have, if you have not subscribed to my channel, make sure you go to unsolicited and subscribe. And also my co-host here, Black Man Unfiltered, we're here, go to his channel, subscribe. We're here every Monday and we're trying to come to some solutions. And guess what? In a little bit, we want you all to, we're going to drop the link and we want to hear from you all, but we're looking for solutions because Black Man, um, we need to know, we need to figure out how the men can teach or be an example, or I ain't going to say teach. I know this a lot, but I want you all to be able to speak to these women also. And like I said, I, I experienced a hundred plus that we're not listening, but does that mean we stop talking? Does that mean we call them out? Does that mean I say you, I mean, am I harder on them? Do I pull out the camera and show their bad behavior, black man? What yeah, do I do? I, I think that, I think that it, it, we should do what mama used to do. Uh, well, my, when, I, when, I, when I went over to the stove to touch the stove when I was a kid, mama said, hey, don't do that, because if you do that, it's going to hurt. 
But then the curiosity came to me again. I said, you know, I ain't going to hurt. I want to go see what it feel like. And mama say, uh, hey, boy, what I tell you? And then the third time when I went and did it, she said, hey, get out now before you get your, you get your, get your head knocked off. Right? So we went through a process of learning. I, I was hard-headed the first time. She had to do a little bit more the second time, and then she had to go in on me the third. What we have to do is we have to let the black women. It is so important that I can't believe that a, a woman that's making millions of dollars with 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 shorts up the crack of her butt, shaking and dropping it on TV, influences women that ain't got no money. You sitting at home watching this girl, and she in her lyrics, she telling you what to do to black men, and she married. I remember I was pissed off at Beyonce for a time. Beyonce say, um, I need a soldier. I need, I don't, I don't need no, I, yeah. all this. Now she's married and now she's saying, uh, can anybody tell me what a billion dollars look like on the elevator? <laughs> her and her husband are billionaires. What are we talking about? Like, like everything changes. But that's still their influences. What do we need to do? Because that is going to sit they gonna get older. They're getting older, and we don't want them all to be old and alone. Because guess what? They also have a the the also the me, the message about marriage isn't good either. Right, because they said marriage is a trap. Um, oh no, fairy tale, romanticized. Fairy tale, fairy tale, Disney, like, yeah, yeah. Disney, it's a Disney movie to be want to to get married and want to be married for life. I mean, if you get married, where what other what what other choice do you have to be married for life? Why yeah. why would you do it going in going in and say this ain't gonna last but five years and then endure more trauma? Because there's nothing when you lose like that. When you for real about stuff, when you for real about real stuff, and you lose, it's trauma. Right. It's not, oh, let me get another one. It's not that uh, I just can't hang out. We, we grew apart. It's trauma. It's not, It's we, you know what? We got to take life serious. And I think that's a big deal right now that we're not taking life too serious. I don't know why, but the women are getting older, right? Mm -hmm. And there's going to come a time when that wall Kevin Samuels talked about is real. Right. Because. And you're gonna be so you're gonna be so conditioned on doing and living the way you want. Then right. if a man do come into your life, you're not gonna be able to hear anything he says because it's gonna always be about you. And guess what? Two selfish people in a relationship don't don't can't work. And it's a lot security boss. I'm gonna say this, and I know it ain't gonna be sexy, but I don't care. It's a lot of self hate. That's what it is. It's a lot of self hate. People just. You know, I was watching uh, Fox uh, Fox Soul the other day, and I heard Vivica talk so badly about Kevin. Yeah, I, I saw I and, saw um, yeah. Sir Hill's video. I didn't see the actual thing. Yeah, man, she was just, you know, karma came back. Yes, you gotta watch how you live. Karma came and got him. Okay, yeah. whatever. That's, okay, Vivica. But I can't Vivica, believe you said that. That the, was awful. Yeah, Vivica, in the 90s, you were an amazing woman. You were beautiful. You were untouchable. You were one of the A, a plus A list uh, actresses on the market, right? You had sex appeal. You know how to, you just, you were beautiful. Every man, every woman wanted to be you and every man wanted to marry you. And mm -hmm. now you have so much self hate for yourself, Vivica, that you chop your face up into a thousand pieces. You've been under the knife a thousand times. No, you know, what? you're still trying to get it right. Black man. See what happened is she can't get no man to love her. Right. So she thinks if she keeps doing something to alter her appearance and make herself quote better, that they will love her. But mm. she hit the wall. They won't yep. love her because of whatever reason. Uh -huh. Her not and Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray used to be fine as wine. Somebody come get her. And look at her now. She's older. Her face then got a little chubbier. Now she's looking in the mirror like, damn, I done wasted all these years. What a man that those men that wanted you then. When you were in your 20s and early 30s and you were turning them down, those same men want the women that, that are in their 20s and 30s now. You're in your late 50s. So listen, um, you're right. But listen to this. I've all I talked about, and I think I talked about, I think it was one of me, your show. Me and you talked about this, I think, um, about I want the federal government to incentivize marriages. And I said, you know, boys 16, 17, 18. 19 years old. I said 18, I think up to 18, but it could go higher. I think if they impregnate a young woman, um, they should have to be made to marry that young person. I think those two people, those two young people have to be married. They have to. Um, and 
the incentive is they stay married. We teach them. When I say we, I mean the federal government has counselors. They have money people. They have um, career people. They have everything that these young people need to become successful as men and women, husband and wife, mother and father. And then, you know, they're in an apartment or something, learning how to get together. Be And I said five years because I, you know, that five year thing for me, it could be longer, but at the end of the time, I think that we should, the government again, put them in a nice home, get them started, and then let them go. Because even if it's not successful, they would have had to be in this thing for five years learning how to be married and, and, and um, accounting for their decisions to get pregnant and have a baby. I don't think we should no lo any longer promote single motherhood. Okay, I don't. I know that they're, the babies are coming and I know they need to be cared for, but we all need to be in here together raising these kids the, the best that we can and have some, um, you know, have some counseling there, have everything that they need to make them successful. And the village, like, like you say, auntie, grandma and all of them, instead of them controlling it, you have uh, people like myself and other people. I'm not controlling it, but I'm there saying, look, this is how we do this. This is how we do this in, in all facets of their life. You know, every whatever it takes to make sure these people are successful. And, and if I ask you this, what, what are the what are the people, um, the, the group of people that still wear the high hats and they still live in their own communities? They don't do social Amish. media. They're Amish people. The, oh, huh? I watched a documentary on the Amish. Jesus Christ. If we adopt what they're doing, we'll be in a better place. Uh, it's diff yeah, you're right. You're right. Because they they show, oh, I watched, I said, oh, I meant to call you that day and tell you. I said, they own everything, though. They, oh, yeah. and they, and yeah. when the girls are, when the girls become, when the girls are four years old, that's the last year they're playing like years, right? Their kids, wow. there's October. When they become five years old, the girls that now are 15 years old, the 15 year old are, is teaching the five year old. Absolutely. Right? What she's mm -hmm. learned. And then, this the eight the 17 to 18 year old is teaching the 15 year old and the 15 year old is teaching the five year old right it's like a a tread down right and but then what do, you know something else that's real and i think this is the uh -huh. um they don't believe in any kind of birth control and use the men and the wife they have like 19 and 20 kids they they, yeah. they just keep having them till they're done having them uh -huh. they don't use any kind of birth control and that's why they can do what you just said uh -huh. and, and, and marriage is Yes. Right. And marriages yes. start as early as 15. Watch this. The one family over here has a son that's 15. They have a family over here that's a girl that's 15. They arrange that marriage. They put them together when they're eight, nine years old. They play together. They grow up together. They know everything about each other. When they get 15, they fall in love with each other. The families build them. Listen, AL say the Amish live like they're in the 1750s. But guess what? Al, they killing it. Not, like, we're talking about influence right now. It's not like that. Instagram and the um, Facebook is really saving our lives, buddy. It's really not. They really hurt us right now. But listen, hey, Lou Casey, how are you? Uh, thank you so much for your ten dollars super chat. And for some reason, my contact is getting better. So it says um, the fact that they're going under cosmetic surgery to to stay young says that there's something not. For, uh, field within themselves they are never find love as they if they have not been able to love themselves as they are you're exactly right and we agree with you and you get the money line song money line i'm gonna run it every time give me mine going up we know the crime yeah yeah so listen, um, this is what I'm asking. Um, this is what I'm asking because I, I, I really believe that in order to get through or to um, make a difference in young women in their lives, to show them that there can be a better life, they don't have to be angry and they don't have to be bitter. We have to set examples. Um, and and I got to continue to be that example. But I don't think that us being, and, and sometimes you don't have to be, I, I'm here to tell you, they listen to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I can't, I don't know if I, can we call that listening to them calling in to have him critique them? I'm not sure if we could have that. I don't know if we can say that that's listening to, but we have to get their attention. But I really don't know if calling them out in all their junk 
is the answer. I need to know from you all. Is that the answer? Do we need to continue to have them? Because guess what, ladies? Black men are not our enemies. Nope. But I don't need black men. Black men, I don't want y'all looking like our enemies either. I need you all to love us. Exactly. And we need to see more of that. And make sure when you're coming into the live, you're giving us a thumbs up. We have about 81 people in here right now, and I can't see what how many um, thumbs up we got. But make sure you give us a thumbs up. But we need to see love from you all. Um, NARC, NARC said it best earlier to earlier with his first chat. I think it was, he said, women need security. We need security and stability for men. We absolutely need it. We it's absolutely a requirement, but if we have it, guess what you all get total submission. And I know some of y'all may not understand that. But I need y'all to think about it. But if we got your security and your stability and that, what that means to me is we know that you're going to be there for us. We're submitting. We're submitting. Now, security boss, you got 80. Listen, guys, come on now. We got 80 people watching and 67 likes. Come on now. We need to get those likes up, guys. Thank you so much for being here. And listen, make sure you're subscribed to Unsolicited. Also to Black Men Unfiltered. Yes, AL says, um, yes, the pushback is a cry for help. Listen, they doing more than pushing back. They about to cut the heads off. You can't walk into a crowded space because guess what, though? Also, the sisterhood is so negative. This so negative and the things that they're teaching are awful. You know, when you talk about deleting brown babies and things of that nature, that means that there's not going to be any men really soon because nobody's going to want to end up oh, yeah the, the thought of that just hurts my heart so what is it that we have to do i'm here to embrace the women what i would like to be would like to hear is i would like to do is have a place for women to come and those ones that are bitter those ones who like to fight those ones who have those sore spots um sb show 2020 at gmail.com and we just talk about it. I'm not a counselor, but I'm there for I'm there to talk to you because first thing what what I understood or what I have grown to understand is that accountability is freeing. Once I took account of my life, it was so much freedom in it. I was like, I got this. When I said or when I took account of making my mistake, meaning having a baby by a man that I was not yet married to, I had the baby on a promise. When I realized I jacked up my life because he went on by his business to the military. Was I going supposed to be cool, cool, cool? Did I go? No. Now, ultimately, he did me a favor. But in the moment, it didn't feel good. But when I realized, okay, I did this. This is what happened. Yeah, he left, but I, he, I allowed him to be here. I took account for it. But when I realized, okay, look, I took account for it. I did wrong. Okay, I can see how it looks now. I see how it looks when a man is not sincere with me. I see how it looks when um, I can't count on something. Exactly. I see how it looks when the security is not there. I'm, I'm identifying now. So now I can get free. But before we go any further, let's read Raw B's privilege $10 uh, comment with her $10 super chat. Thank you so much for that. The reality is this judging women harshly and acting like men are absolved of anything that they do is not going to win over young women. If you make someone a villain, they will play the role. Let me, hold, can I address it? Well, okay. wait a hold that thought. Let's, yeah, you can. But let's do the super chat. Let's do the money line song and do this. Let's we're gonna um we're gonna drop the link because i want you all i want you to be able i what black man what we're gonna do because i know this can get chaotic we're gonna do like one at a time because i know the difference in opinion woman to man is can get chaotic and i would like for everybody to be able to state their case and then we have a, a right to or you have a right to address that because uh what robbie is saying is correct but robbie before black man says anything to you i want you to know that we have been calling black men trashy, deadbeat. He ain't hit no nothing. Pookie, Ray Ray. We got some other names for him too, don't we? Yep. For how long? Uh, year, decades. Decades. And it's just now that the man is changing. I just gave you an example 
uh, of just last year when my dad, I told you all, Robbie, you may not know about this, that I told you that my dad had six kids, y'all. He impregnated one woman six times that was not his wife. Now, I'm on her too. She's passed away. But I'm thinking, what kind of was that? This man was married. What, what are you doing? You know, I... You know, she's passed away. I ain't got nothing for y'all. I prom Listen, she's passed away. Lord, forgive me. But I ain't got nothing for her. I'm sorry. Six kids. I'm sorry. But it's like, wow, what are you doing? This man is married. Why are you ruining your life? She never gave account for anything she did. And she, six kids later by somebody else's husband, y'all. Come on. There was nothing good about that. There was nothing good about that. Y'all come. And you know, yeah, because I'm looking at the chat, and um, Narc had a perspective. Uh, he said that uh, women are out of order because we're out of order. They're doing what uh, they're doing what they want to do. Or what. I mean, they're doing it. Uh, something he said. Then Frenzy said, "Men should be leaders." Until they start, yeah, uh -huh. men should be leaders until they start judging women. You, uh, now that is a smart thing to say. You know why? Because even I love history, guys. Wait a minute. Men should be leaders until they start judging, judging women. Uh -huh. And even back in the day, guys, Robert back in the day, I love history. Back in the day, kings ruled the land. And if a woman got out of line, he had the right to say, take her, take her to the uh, take her to be deleted. Right. That's been going on for centuries. Right. Kings made decisions. M women have been women have been. Um, been uh, put on that plat. I mean, put on that stage for a long time. So have men. Men take the men to the guillotine. Take the women to the guillotine, right? Because the king had to rule. There was no we're going to pander to the women and then the, then then hold the men responsible. Just like uh, I'm addressing uh, Robbie. Robbie, we have to understand sugar. Um, we have to understand. Like this one I was reading. We are women are out of order because uh, we're out of order. They're doing what they think. Uh, will attract security. No, no, no. That's that's it, it, that. Yes, they are. Some women are, but we got to talk about the majority. The majority of women right now are being told by other women that have been through toxic situations that men are not necessary. Whoa, what was that? Okay, so listen, y'all, male. How you doing today, male? It's good to see you. So listen, Robbie. How you doing? What happened? Where you go, girl? Robbie, you got to Yeah, she got out. I don't know what happened. Go back, go back out and come back in because we definitely want to speak to you. Um, you know what? Uh NARC, you are exactly right. But what we're talking about now is the modern woman who is heavily influenced by Instagram and social media. Now, again, I too agree that there's a lot of good women out there that are um are traditional women that want to be uh married, that want to be wives, and just need an example. So I agree with that too, but there's a lot of them that are foul in their responses and their actions. And we're going to have to pluck the ones out that want to be different. And the only way I can see doing that for me is to show them empathy, testimony, and compassion. And I'm a woman. So I think what you're saying though, is for the, before the men, now we're talking about men now, because men now and not NARC, I'm talking about you. You guys are a little different than what my dad was. You know, y'all a little y'all a lot different. I ain't gonna lie, y'all a lot different. Y'all are tuning in. You you're co-parenting, you're getting your kids, you are showing up. Right. You know, the man before you maybe didn't do that. And if they didn't, we do too have to continue to pour into you all and tell you how valuable you are to the kids. Because Puka and Ray Ray can change their mind too. So we're not leaving them out. We're just trying to figure what I've come to the conclusions is my conclusions are that the women are tougher. <laughs> Y'all, I ain't gonna lie. We're a little more tough. We're a little more stubborn. Men mm. tend to be more logical and they listen. Women are very emotional. And there were some emotional men in that too, y'all. And that 100 plus, those were women. But there were some men in that too talking crazy. It was. And right. I was surprised by that. But it happened. So, um we have to pour into both, but it seems as though we have more of, and it may be because of Kevin Samuels. He's been valuing the men and showing them their value for what, two or three years now. So there's always, and then you maybe have the manosphere. I don't know too much about that, but there may have already been some examples set, but for the women, there hasn't, 
y'all can help me with this. I don't know everything. There hasn't been many examples set in these spaces where the women can see other women that are winning. So that's what we're pushing for. That's what I'm pushing for. And Robbie, you here? Go ahead and tell us what you think. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me better now? I had to switch microphones. I can. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you guys doing today? Hey, Black Man Unfiltered. Hey, Sugarfoot. How you doing? Okay, so let me let me let me give you my perspective on the situation. Yes, ma'am. Now I always hear the pushback that well, women have been doing it for years, right? Cool. Years. Decades. Right? I get that. And I hear you. But we're talking about leadership. According to men, females' leadership is subpar and it's not working out. So why again do men want to do what women have been doing? See, when it comes down to leadership, you cannot lead me by doing what I'm doing and then expect me to follow you, especially if you are saying that what I'm doing isn't working. So if I what I'm doing isn't working and you doing the same thing, we had a stalemate. Now, when it comes to leadership, though, you have to lead better. We're always talking about single mothers as if single mothers become single mothers alone. The last time I checked, the only birth that happened on the face of the whole entire globe was Jesus H. Christ, when God inseminated Mary without having sexual interaction. These single mothers also have fathers or sperm donors that were involved in the mix. What we need to be addressing is this incessant need to have sex on both ends, because it's not just the women that need to bust a nut, it's men that need to bust a nut too. And we can't qualify it by saying, well, this woman is a trash can, or don't do this, or this woman isn't worthy. If men want to sit there and call themselves leader and, and they want to step into their pure value, then men too need to stop having sex outside of of committed long-term relationship. It's this free love that's the issue. It's everybody wanting to jump up on something, twerk something and fly somebody out and then put people into categories. Well, if you're a virtuous woman, then you're worth this. But if you're gonna just bust your legs open to everyone, well then, hey, I'm not valuable enough in myself to say, even though that's what you're gonna do, I'm not gonna engage. I'm just gonna take my turn on the doorknob as well. So you can't, you cannot pull in young women by acting like them being sexual beings is the only issue on the table. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. So Robbie, I'm going to need, we're going to, you talk so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's that New York. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to slow you down, but I didn't want to interrupt. So let's, let's, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I need you to go back because you said, how are you going, how are we going to lead? if we can't fix what we're doing and if we're doing the same thing. Okay. I need you to go back there. You know what I'm talking about when you said that kind of like, yes. at the beginning, come on. Yes, I, need, I need you to speak in plain English. I, this men, is what I'm, this is what I want you to say. There you go. Men, men cannot the lead. They're the leader. I fully right. believe that men are the leader. And yes, I'm speaking to y'all as a married woman. Men right. are the leader. Yes, ma'am. But I and I totally understand men feeling like they have not had a voice and men needing to be heard. Okay, but, stop right there. Stop right there. I need you to explain that. When you say men have not had a voice and they need to be heard, what are you saying? I need to hear exactly what you're saying because we can we're gonna have some solutions. We're not gonna brush over anything. The words are going to be said, the um the examples and the narrative is going to be painted so we all can be on the same page when we leave here, whether we leave here with an answer or not. So Absolutely. if nothing else, I'm going to understand what you're talking about. Yes, men have a lot on their shoulders. Men have been taught to stuff their emotions. Men have been taught to be icebergs. And I totally understand that. So I need for people to not say that I'm a feminist because I have my own independent way of thinking. That's very dismissive and diminutive. And we can't have these open conversations because everybody wants to attach a label. Can I just be a woman that's a free thinker? Is that possible? Absolutely. You that's what that's what security boss pushes. I want every one to, woman to be an independent thinker because if it was this way, the influence would not matter. 
because you will do what is good for you. So listen, I don't know who's saying that, but don't even worry about them because you are a married woman. <laughs> oh, I know. But that I just trumps all of that. That trumps all of that. So I just need you to speak to what and I want you to speak slow because I hear you, but I need everybody else to hear and understand because this is the problem. No one is under. We're not understanding each other. Men think logically. Women think emotionally. Men don't have the empathy and the compassion that they need or that's required to understand women. And it may not be all, but this is what I'm seeing. So if you can help us, Robbie, it, it can only be the beginning. And you're advocating for women. I love women, but I advocate for men because I do see more of a change in men than I'm seeing in women. So we're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to strengthen this culture and put it together. So from your point of view, you just said it, men are leaders. They are. And for decades, they have been forced to hold back what they're feeling. Right. So now they're talking. Mm -hmm. But Stop. let's be clear. I don't advocate for women. I advocate for children and families. And the way I feel about it is this. Men have the ultimate authority when it comes to procreation. Now, I get it. Men say they don't have reproductive rights, but they have rights before conception occurs. They have the right to hold their seminal fluids to themselves. They have the right to abstain. We cannot sit here in a society and say only the women have the rights or the, only the women should abstain. Men should abstain too. Leadership comes from looking at a problem and finding a solution at ground zero. Ground Stop zero. There. Let's mm -hmm. see if we agree on this. Black man, you are the only man. I think we're going to pull up one more man here. Oh, that's a woman. I, 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 would, I would have to, again, it all goes back to this. I hear what Robbie is saying. Men should what abstain. Man, men, should not, men should not be out here throwing penis around. Robbie, there are women around here right now that when their main objective when they leave the house is to go get them some. I'm going to find me somebody tonight to, to have sex with. But again... And, and, but that's the mindset of women today. That's what I'm saying. We need to... I think as, as us being people that are older, we need to start attaching ourselves to these younger girls. These younger... These, listen, <laughs> I, I work for this corporate company. I ain't going to say their name. But they just they just asked the question in the meeting. They said, who do you think has the most uh, sexual harassment cases in the workplace to, today in 2022? Everybody, of course, said, oh, men, of course. They said, no, it's the women. The women are going by grabbing men. They're going by touching men. They're being aggressive with men. They're being sexually aggressive with men. In so, the, even in the workplace. So women have, their whole mindset have changed that I'm going to target him. I'm going to have sex with him and I'm going to break him down until I get him. And this oh, is so you're saying, saying that women have, have more. more. Go ahead. Well, Robbie, let me ask you one thing, and then I want to get because we're gonna have to have some agreements before we before we go for it further. Robbie, is it possible for you to cam up? Yeah, I can cam up. I just don't I love to... the way I look today, but I'll cam up for you. But you look beautiful, and I need your fan in my life. Okay. So okay, so here's the deal: we first need to agree on one thing. Um, <laughs> who makes the baby? Now. We need to agree on that because it is it, it, it's not that hard. No matter what kind of listen, I'm going to tell you now because I'm, I'm strong with this one. I don't care what women are doing. A man ain't got to go over to the house. A man controls his sperm. <laughs> he ain't even got to go. He ain't even got to go knock on the door. He ain't got to put it in. He doesn't have to do any of that. Y'all, we got to be real about this. The man controls his body part. His body part does not have to participate in the action. We got to agree on this. Now, if y'all don't, men, I got Freezy, how are you? If you all don't see it that way, I need you all to help us see it another way. Because I understand nature and I understand it's natural, but this is where that, that discipline needs to come into play if you're not interested in giving away your power. So first we need to agree on that. Because I'm hearing black men say because the women are so aggressive, the men are being a little more free and going ahead and partaking in what they're offering. I'm saying I hear you. I see it. But 
that we can't get lost in translation. That's not that's not the way it goes. And and Fruzy, I think I, I, Robbie, I know where you are, Black man. I think that's what I heard you say. Well, I, 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 okay, I'll, I'll take it back to the country. Uh, if anybody grew up there, in every batch of cows, there's a runt. Every batch of puppies, there's a runt. In every batch of any animal that's being born, there's multiples that are coming as a runt. The runt is always the weakest one. They're always the one that's behind. He doesn't grow as fast as the rest of them. And every so in every animal kingdom, there's a runt. In every community, there's a runt. And black communities, there are runts. There are men out there that will take that aggressive woman and sleep with her. We got to understand that there's good and bad in every group. So, I agree. so we have women that are runts that will go out and say, I'm going to give this thing to the first man that, that look at me tonight and wink at me and buy me some Chinese food. Or I'm going to or the man going to say, hey, she giving it up. <laughs> Why not? Right. I, I'm, and, and those runts, what I mean by that, these are the men that were in school that never got a girl. Right. They never had a pretty girl, never had nothing. And now they grew up. They got a little success and a girl offering them something. And that little boy on the inside of them says, you really like me? I'm willing to do whatever. That's the runt in the men. Women the same way. I didn't get too many boys in school. I was a little heavy. I lost a little weight. And now the men really showing me some attention. Here you go. You can have some too. You can have some. You can have some. So we have runts in each one. And we have to understand that those runts are never going to go away. Those runts are going to remain the same. This is never going to stop. What we need to talk about is the people that are strong enough. And like you said, that are strong enough to stop it. They're strong enough to talk to these young women and say, listen, those are runts. You're not a runt. You're a special young lady that you don't have to go out and give your body away to these different men. You don't have to. Young men, you don't have to go and shoot your sperm in a trash can. You don't have to do it. Okay, so you are agreeing that that is something that the men are responsible for. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, yes, I think women control sex because without them controlling it, it would be illegal. Um, but but I but I will say on on the flip side, of men explain that to us because you know a person like me. When you say women control sex, what do you mean? That means I, I kind of differ from that. I mean, yeah, because I mean, you know, I it doesn't have to be there. Yeah, well, well, right, right, right. But say for instance, okay, I'll give you I'll give you an example. A okay, young man, a young man takes a girl out to dinner. This right. young, this young lady has never been on a date before in her life, but he did something okay. nice for her. Took her out to dinner. They held hands a little bit, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Gave each other a little eye contact. He takes her home, right? As he's mm -hmm. taking her home, he's walking. He's about to walk back to his car. There are good men that are like that, right? I know a few. Mm -hmm. And he wants to leave and go home. And she said, "Uh, -uh you, come, you can come in for a little bit." I got you. You come in for you come in for a little bit, right? And he and he's like, "Oh no, I don't think. Oh no, come on, come on in. Oh come on, don't do me like that." And next thing you know. So she's consensual. I got it. So you're saying in a consensual situation, the woman controls the sex. Yes. Okay. But remember that man also can make a decision whether to consent also, because he can say, you know what? You a virgin. I don't want to ruin your life. Let me leave. And that means he controlled it at that point. Or he didn't have to accept her advances. But what you're saying, if the advances are accepted, the woman is in control because she allowed it. Yes. Okay. Robbie, would you agree with that? To a degree. What he said was that if the woman is consenting, then the man agrees. Now the woman is the one who's responsible. Yes, for the sexual act, but again, I'm talking about the semen itself. Because what I hear collectively from male spaces is they are primarily upset about child support. Okay, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Okay, okay. How are you, sir? That's my guy. I'm fine. I'm how, how are you, security boss? I'm doing good. It's good to see you. Oh, uh, you too. Uh, black man on filter. What's going on, my brother? My guy. So uh, what you think about this? Now, we just we're we doing this in some segments because we need to agree. We need to agree. We need to come to a consensus on some. <laughs> because, um, I've never heard such a, a, a you know, a, a double way of thinking about sex because, um, you know, the man, he has to be willing and the woman has to be willing. Also, the both of them are responsible. So we're not going to pretend that they're not. But I want to hear what you're saying. Uh I think it's about I think it's just it's about to get kind of 
it's it's about to get real right now because it's about to take a turn. My 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 opinion is uh you know, women telling men to not concentrate on women having sex to me is low key feminism. And it's disguised as concern for men. It's disguised as concern for men doing better, but it's really not. You you just don't want us to tell you nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like when when men talk, you should listen. If a man tell you, listen, woman, stop having sex. A lot of these dudes, they don't mean you any good. You're you're receiving the the brunt of the the pregnancy and and the uh, having the baby. You're receiving the worst end of it. You know, uh, when it comes to psychologically, postpartum, all that kind of stuff, you know, laying down on the delete table. I don't want to say the A word. Right. But we know what I'm saying. Women right. are receiving the worst end of the deal. So right. when men like uh, black men unfiltered and me, we're telling women, listen, listen to us. We're not telling you to not have sex because we don't want you to have fun like you think we're having fun. This is not a fun thing. No, we're telling you to save yourself. We're telling you to save your daughters. We're telling you that we ain't, oh, a lot of us ain't SHI, you know, whatever. You're right, exactly. You but see, I think, we're not I taking think, up for being, we're trying, to, we're trying to help you. Right. There's I, think a, three, I think all three of y'all are saying the same thing then, because that's what Rob B is saying. Right, exactly. Place. I think, honestly, men don't want to hear the real, because men are always want to sit there and say that women are being emotional, or women just don't want men to tell them anything. And women I'm here to emotional. tell you, okay, well, I'm here to tell you, ladies, as a matter of fact. I didn't have children until I was 32. That was a decision. I was very much aware of my reproductive health. So what I'm saying to men and women is you ultimately have the power of the children that are produced. And especially for ladies, even though I don't advocate for ladies, I advocate for the children. You're going to be the one taking care of these children because men are allowed to walk away from the responsibility, even though y'all went half on a baby. They're allowed to walk away from their spiritual obligation, from their financial obligation, and from their physical obligation. Okay. Don't let anybody shame you or make you feel like you are the only part of the problem because when children are concerned, it is a half on a baby situation. Uh -huh, if you uh -huh. go and pull any child's DNA, they have 50%, 23 chromosomes to be exact, that are yours, 23 chromosomes that belong to their fathers. And if uh -huh. we're going to have this conversation and be honest about it and look for the solution, the reality is a lot of men need to be in their daughter's lives, guiding their steps from the beginning. See, I'm blessed and I'm fortunate. I had my father in my life right. from conception until the day he passed away. A uh -huh. lot of women don't have that. So when you're speaking to the masses and you're constantly putting out this narrative that it's women that need to stop having sex, but kind of low key signifying that it's okay for men to keep having sex. It's okay for men to be reckless with their seed. It's okay for men to keep going half on babies and walking away from the problem. That That's a black community problem. That's not a female problem. That's not a women problem. Mm -hmm. That's a problem for the progeny and moving forward because all it does is continue to create generational curses and cycles of abuse. Because again, y'all are giving low key all of the control, all of the power to the women, but then saying that the men are the leaders. What I'm doing is I'm calling to men to lead. Teach your brothers to control Slow your seeds. Right, okay, you're right, Robbie, you're right. Robbie, Teach you're your brothers to control your seeds. Teach your brothers to be men of discrimination. Be dismissive. If you okay, see so a Robbie, woman, Robbie, you're, Robbie, you're asking, Robbie, you're asking for men to lead. Well, okay, are you asking for a man to lead? I go in with you, and I have sex with Raw B, and I go in you, not Raw, but I don't go in Raw B Raw, but I go in Raw B with that Trojan man, right? And it's just say, for instance, for for shits and giggles, come on, say for shits and giggles, the, the condom breaks with Raw with Raw B, right? And then you get, and then all of a sudden, out of that, you become pregnant. And I come to you as a leader and say, Robbie, I'm not in the position right now to be a father, and I'm leading. I'm being a leader right now, telling you that this that I I am not in position to be a father right now, based Bring on this condom breaking with you tonight. I need a woman. I don't want to be a father, and you choose to keep that baby. Then then what? You, there's, a, there's a lot of we're not That's talking why about that. A 
right? That's why there's a double barrier method, which is why I tell women you can control your reproductive health. Women can put vaginal contraceptive films inside of their vagina before a sexual entanglement occurs and put an added layer of spermicide. Women can use birth control pills. Women can use cervical caps, diaphragm. Why they not doing it here, Robbie? Why they not doing it? Hold on, hold on, hold on, Robbie. But Robbie, hold on. Black men, hold on, because because y'all just said something and y'all talking way too fast. Slow down. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, you me know he's from me Houston me. and I'm from New York, so we gonna. I go need y'all to slow down, and it's another thing too. I need and Robbie, I thank you so much for being here. I need some other ladies to cam up because we gonna get some solutions tonight. You gonna pop so that black, can I, one more time? So black can, I, can, I, can, I, can I add to this um conversation? That's you can, but can, let me let me say this one thing before I forget it. Y'all know I forget. Let me go to black man one moment. Black man, I heard you say, and I know I'm not stupid, that a lot of times men are having sex, but they're not intending to have any babies. Right. Let's speak to that. And then we're going to let Freezy talk about, we're going to let Freezy add his point. But let's speak to that. Are you saying that in 2022, we men, responsible men or any man is still thinking that if he's having sex that he can't have a baby? No, no, no. What I'm saying is there are responsible men out here that putting putting that Trojan man on and sometimes that Trojan ain't as good, as good of a protector as it should be. Right. And, and what I'm saying is black men and black women alone. I'm talking about both parties here. Both right. of them should like she just said, she just named 20. Oh, I'm sorry. The other night we're on a panel. They said it's 32, 32, contracept, 32 <laughs> yeah. contraceptives for right. women. So right. you mean tell me all these women are getting pregnant and becoming single moms and there's 32 ways to stop it? <laughs> So listen, my thing is this. Now, now we have condoms. Okay, fine. All black men, go out and get you some condoms. If you don't have none, reach out to me. I'll get you some. If you don't have none, I'll send you a, a case of Jergens. Rub one out. But don't go out and, and, and put your seed in another female. And women, all alike. You got 32 ways to stop being a single mom. 32. But, but, you, but you just said she said that she got pregnant. And then he said, okay, but I don't want the baby. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying like if he was having safe sex with her, like if the condom broke or something. Right, right. And, and okay. she got pregnant, he said, listen, whoa, whoa, we were safe. I'm sorry that happened, but I, I had that condom on for a reason. I am not ready. I, I ain't, I don't want to be no daddy. Okay, right. so wait a minute right there. So Frizzy, before you go, black man, I got to ask you to walk us through that because I, I, I really need to understand what men are feeling. Right. So, so I, I got this concept from, uh, from a prophet, Dave Chappelle. And uh, the prophet Dave Chappelle said, <laughs> he said on one of his interviews that it should be, the law should go both ways. And okay. he said that if a man is having safe sex with a woman and son all, uh, just happens with the condom, it happens with the contraceptive, he said the man should have the same right as the woman. He said a lot of women say, he said a woman can go and say, I'm not ready to be a mama. And they got five different options for her not to be a mama. He said, but a man can say, I don't want to be a father. And that woman can say, well, you're going to be one anyway. And he's going to be a father whether he likes it or not. Okay. So oh, you, well, like, me... so what you're saying is when they have a difference in opinion or a difference in solution to the, the baby being here, then they both need to agree. Exactly. That okay. They both, they, they both need to sit down and can come I to listen. Something? I'm pregnant from that mistake, uh, that condom break the other night. Okay, listen, I'm pro life. What we'll do is I'll be here with you through everything. We'll go to the doctor appointments together. We'll you know, go through it everywhere. I am not ready to be a father. I, as a man, would recommend putting this child up for adoption or putting this child in a loving home. But this child is not ready for me to be its father. I'm not prepared for that. I'm not. I'm not ready for that. OK, so listen to listen, listen to this. I can almost agree to that being that there should be some things, some something added to. A law that would that would require that to happen. But how do we know who are the right parties are that's making the decisions? And before you answer that question, I want Rob B. And what I mean, though, is since women are so liberal with having sex. If I'm pregnant, how do I know that black man is the one that should be having this conversation with me versus Henry, whom I also slept with, um, that may want this baby? You get what I'm saying? Right. So hold that thought. Robbie, go ahead and add what you were getting ready to say, because you understand where, where men are now. You understand what a modern men, the modern thought process for men. You know what it is. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, to what you were saying, you can tell the DNA of a child at 11 weeks gestation through a blood draw, for those of you that do not know. But what I wanted to say is this, today's modern man, and I am a living witness, I bear full testimony. When a man sees a woman without children, a man will be like, let me just put the head in. A man will stealth you and try and stick his stuff inside of you uncovered, mm -hmm. especially if you are doing your thing and you are successful. That happens with um, a lot mm -hmm. of frequency. When I tell you I've had to break up with people because they wanted me to have their children when I didn't want to have children, that goes on as well. And that is another part of the conversation that we never talk about but it happens. And again, it's still the call for oh. women to be leaders. I need men to lead. I'm just okay, saying. Hold that thought. Freezy, come on, sir. Tell us what you got. <laughs> listen, listen, it's 2022. Can we, can we stop spewing this narrative that black men are irresponsible and not taking care of their kids? It's already been a study. Uh, Time Magazine yes, did a, New York Times did a study already that black men are the most involved in their kids life they are involved in the kids life they just don't want to be messed up with the woman and yes. I'm gonna tell you something. listen i did i did uh I, I i was on a panel not too long ago and i asked this woman who has similar views much respect to robbie and she said robbie said um she didn't have a child her first child till she was 32 listen i salute you know i much mm -hmm. respect but i was on a panel um i was on a panel with a a, a lady with similar views and I asked her, I said, hey, listen, if you were in a relationship and your significant other was giving you verbal abuse. You should to, be. I was on that day with you. You remember. Yeah, I, yeah, I said, yeah. it, 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 And security boss, this is something that that heart that's hardly ever talked about. Verbal abuse. We always talk about physical abuse, physical abuse. But we know who are the biggest biggest uh, uh contributors uh, uh, contributors yeah, yeah contributors, contributors to verbal abuse. Uh, verbal abuse and i asked this young lady yeah. would you stay would you stay in this relationship if the verbal abuse was to a magnitude to a high magnitude she said oh listen she didn't even she didn't even study she said of course not i would leave and i said what do you think black men have been doing for years we can't take it the verbal abuse verbal abuse is some studies have shown verbal abuse is worse than physical, but you just can't see the wounds. Men are, men are leaving these situations. They're not leaving their kids. But so often because the women are bitter and the men are leaving them, they're painting a narrative saying that the men aren't are dead beats. They're leaving everybody. And that's not true. That's well, exactly. what, what women, Frizzy, I he, agree. With you. I agree with you, but. I got a little bit of pushback because, like I said, there was a little uh, little clip that got onto Instagram, and it, I just said something in single mothers, and over a hundred women lashed out with, at me, and the men couldn't have been anywhere around. They couldn't have been anywhere around because it just doesn't make sense. So it's still happening, but we all agree that the situation for men is definitely turning around. Men are showing up. Men are there. Now, the reasons why men left previously or needed their peace, you're probably right. There probably was a whole lot of no peace, you know, nagging or what have you. But I don't know if I'm giving you a pass for that, though. I understand that it could be detrimental and I don't want anybody to die from it. But it seems as though this should have been something that was able to be done. But I get it. You have to save your life. I, I well, agree. Well, the thing about it is, security boss, it's not about actually dying from it. Let, let's look at the dynamics of a real man. OK, a real man, once he loses his masculinity, he damn near is dead. He's walking dead. But that's the so, point. That's the point that Raw B is making. Yeah. Right. Because the point that is, this, like, that's what she's saying. If you are intentional with how you date, if you are intentional with who you sleeping with, would you even get to that point? You wouldn't. And that's the part. I'm not sitting there saying that women are without sin and they should be completely absolved. A lot of women should not. A lot of women have not been raised around men, have not had have a bit more clue what a real man is. So when you are dating women and you're choosing who to entertain sexually, 
Just like women have to be able to know the red flag, the signs and the triggers, men have to be able to know the red flags, the signs and the triggers as well. And no. it has nothing to do with a woman simply being a single mother because some women are single mothers based on divorce. Some women are single mothers based on widowhood. You never know what could bring a woman to single motherhood. And if we're going to be like really legit and honest about it, a lot of black men are abusive to new women they encounter based on what they have gone through in previous relationships the same is the same can be said about black women now if you can't agree to that point then i have to leave the panel because then it becomes a disingenuous conversation uh, first, hold on let me say this you you are, i i agree with you to a certain extent watch this you think you you act like if you get into a relationship with a woman women are the most um I'm trying to find a word. God, give me one. Uh, I so I won't have to be. I won't use the wrong one. Uh, That's what you're trying to say. Just women are the most. They they, they 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 hide the most. They can hide shit where you can't. You'll never know. What. Listen, so there, are, there are women. There are women come into a relationship. Yes, I agree. But women could. They're women are very good at it. That's why women cheat more than men. But men just men just get caught. But we will talk about a whole nother show. But I, I, you're I, right. Just, so listen, I, 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 go ahead I and get. I I want to add to uh, yeah. what Robbie said too. Listen, Robbie, we're not discounting what you're saying. Listen, we're listening and we understand. Right. And I actually agree with some of that. I don't. I don't believe that black men out here in numbers just physically abusing women. No, I don't believe that. But I said abusive. I, you broke abusive down to mental, and verbal, and and financial abuse. So why when I say that black men are abusive to because, women, it because, just has to be limited to physical. Because we abuse got, is abuse. Well, the thing about it is, we do have to categorize. You know, when we're dealing with men. Most of the abuse is physical, and when we're dealing with women, most of the abuse is verbal. That that's a truth. That's a fact. That's the truth. But, I but beg what, to differ. I think a lot of abuse that comes from men is financial abuse and verbal abuse. I think in seldom instances it escalates to physical abuse. But what, if you look at the, abuse? if you what, look what at, but wait a minute, hold on for a minute, Robbie. I, I'm 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 sorry. Not, I can't. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> We and you gonna have to we're gonna have to talk about this one because I do know that women can be ver very, very much so verbally abusive. Yeah, damn, damn near mean. Black yeah. women, black women are mean and they can cut and you it with gets, their tongue. It keeps getting told. Absolutely. About Hold on, this is what I want to say to Freezy's a point, and it is something that we don't talk about. I mean, it goes on. I mean, it goes on and we breeze through it, but I, there are studies out there now that men do have chemical imbalance, uh, ch chemicals in their brain that can't allow that kind of stuff to happen because it will put them in a different place versus women being emotional like we are. You know, we can handle that, but some men can't take that type of abuse or everyday activity and be okay. And we don't talk about it. We don't. So and let's be, let's be point, honest. Go ahead. No, you're let's right. be Please. honest, security boss. Women are psychological warriors. They they, oh. they train for this. Okay, so let's well, just look at Robbie right, right now. She 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 roll. Look at her. No, it's I'm agree. I'm not gonna deny what you're saying. We are psychological warriors. Agree, I can't we, deny we, you. We, we ain't got time for all of that. So we don't and stuff. But but she's still going back to this. You are the leaders, and you set the examples. What we're trying to say is we need you all to set the example of your household. Whatever the reason is, this women, these women are so verbally abusive and they can be. I mean, their tongues will slice you up. I agree with you. There's a, there's something there that the men are not embracing and, and getting rid of. What Robbie wants to see is a man that's so strong that he tells this woman, y'all forgive me for saying this. Shh, sit down. Right. <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm getting to say. <laughs> That's what Wild B says women need sometimes. I mean, I've even said it before, and I hate to say it, but sometimes in some women, you kind of handle them, have to handle them as definitely the weaker vessel, but almost childlike. All right. So um, let me read okay. this. But to oh, 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 I got some on that one. Hold on. <laughs> Missouri F says, uh, thank you for so much for your dollar nine nine super chat. She says, I'm a divester boss lady. I gave up on black men. I hate that you did that because I will never give up on a black man. Come on security. So you know what? I'm glad you're here listening, but I'm not going to give up on you either. So you keep coming over here. 
you keep listening. I'm going to pour into you as a black woman. And I'm also going to pour into these other black men and add value to them. And maybe one day when your heart is right and you're in the right place, one of them come walking down the street and you'd be like, mm, I see you too. Cause it's not over. You still here, but I thank you so much for your super chat. Yeah, but Freezy, go ahead and um complete that thought because oh, we're going to okay, bring okay, yeah, I'm gonna say, Ooh. Oh, you, oh, it's going to be quick. Go black man. Man. No, go ahead. Listen, say, I don't want to end Western society, right? Western yep. society has enabled black women. Let's be okay. Earlier in the conversation, black man unfiltered gave a fact in history, throughout history, men in general have had the power. If a woman got out of line, he could have he could have had her deleted. Okay, so what, what I'm saying is it, it was extreme like that, but we know it we're was. not living in times like that. In Western society today, it has enabled black women because that's all I'm dealing with right now. OK, it has enabled black women to act out without any consequences. Let's face it. They have leverage and they're using it to their advantage. Let, let's just face it. I well, mean, listen, Freezy, you might be right about that, but it's still up for you, up to you all to correct us. Uh, hold on, that's, and let me give you some pushback no, on, on that. Me, give me I, just mean, a I don't mean correct us as in that, but. Y'all are y'all still are, I'm Robbie. Y'all still are leaders. Y'all can't y'all have to get into what we're feeling and feel it and figure out why we're so ornery or out of control. Now, some of you, some of them gonna be left behind. You know, if you can't uh -huh. touch them, then you just leave them alone. I'm agreeing with you all the way, but don't be dismissive to what you're seeing and, and hearing and feeling. Don't be dismissive to the woman and discount her because she's a woman. You still got to get in there and figure out what she's ex what she her experiences are. You still have to have that empathy and figure out what's going on. I mean, you do, but well, well, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not, not labeling black. Okay, I'm not ahead. labeling black women. I'm not labeling black women like that just because they're mere women. I'm not. Right. I, I don't want you to get that impression I, of me. I'm but, not saying you. I'm. I'm just talking. You know. Right. What what I the reason why I made that statement, I want black women to be aware of how much power they've been drunken with. And I don't think they even understand it. Like it, it's they don't understand, you know, the the element of power they've been given. And it's almost like second nature. So when they give pushback and the way they give it, they don't even understand where that comes from. Mm. The psychology of it, the nature of it in Western society. It, 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 it's enabled them to do it. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, so I, when a, I when understand a, what you're saying. But listen, we got a comment here. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Boss, can you roll this comment back? Because one young man here said um, said this. And Freezy, I want you to uh, last thought and then I'm going to get somebody else up here. He said that uh, it's not the man's job. It's not the black man's job. And I disagree with that. Yeah, mm. I, 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 if y'all, if, if we want to, if, if we're supposed to Follow, submit, give value, love, respect the black man. And that's our goal. Then why is it not <clears throat> your goal to lead us, to um, cover us and protect us? Because see, protection covers that. Protection is knowledge also, y'all. Because y'all have knowledge that we don't have. And, yeah, and, and go ahead, black man. No, that, that's that SYSBM he's talking about. That save yourself black man. That's what he's talking about. And so okay. what, what, what I wanted to say was an anecdotal experience. It's for you, Freezy. Okay. Right? Anecdotal experience. I always talk about my sister because she's just all over the place. My sister met that she had, she already had three. She's on her third kid. And, and, and then she started dating another dude. And I'm telling her, you know, baby, come on. Goddamn. Is it that important? Do you really got to have him raise your kids? Do you really got to have this trash dude? He's trash. Right? Raise your kids, baby. Mom and daddy, my mom and dad been married for 39 years, bro. My mom and dad were married. My grandmother, we didn't, nobody believed in divorce in our family. Nobody, right? And so they, we had the examples. Baby, what's wrong? So she came in with the dude. She came over to my mom. I'm over to visit mom. She came to drop their kids off at my mom's house and just walked out. And I was like, oh, no, no. Uh-uh. Mama getting older. Uh, Why are you dropping your kids? I got, uh, my man need me to do that. I said, girl, you've been knowing the boy 24 hours. What could he want you to do this early? Um, I said, come get your kids now. And she, and I've tried to send her son at the door, and she pushed her son up against the door. You ain't going. Go ahead and sit down. 
And I and I just I I I said, well, I said, well, first of all, you're not going to put your hands on him over some trash ass dude. That's the first thing you're not going to do. And the dude was like, you got a problem? I said, sir, I'll de- I-, I can delete you in thirty seconds. Just go sit down somewhere. Your the funeral home right up the street. Uh, so go go sit in the car. Uh, and it's between me and my sister. And my sister, me protecting her son. You old bitch ass nigga. You ain't nothing. You this and blah blah blah. I mean, talk to me like I was a dude on the street she ain't never met before. Wow. Right? She picked up a damn. I wish I had my brother on here tonight. She picked up a damn stick about this big around, bro. And I went to pick her son up and take him in the house. She hit me so, oh, so hard with that damn stick, and busted all this across the top of my forehead. Blood shooting out of my damn head, bro. That's how mad she got because I was holding her accountable. Wow. Right. All right. I was holding her accountable. Whoa, 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 watch this. I'm After sorry. That, I went red. I said, "Oh, I got to get her." <laughs> I, had to go. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. My daddy stopped the whole thing because okay. I went red. My daddy was in, in the midst of it. My mom didn't understand. My mom was crying like, "Why? Who are you turning into? You have never been like this before. Like, what are you? Who are you? We don't even know you no more. You know? And y'all don't understand. I love him, girl. Y'all been together twenty four hours. What are you talking about? And she did all of that. She did all of that over a dude, mm. verbally abusive and physically abusive over a dude. I ain't mean to long stroke that, but damn it, somebody needs to understand that some of these women out here are just doing this shit because that's who they are. Well, we we understand that. So listen, before we got a lot of people waiting in the back. So Freezy, um, thank you so much for coming up. And please come back. We're going to continue this conversation until we get some answers. But I absolutely love what you added as far as the verbal abuse. Because we don't Thank think you. about that. So I security you. Boss. Thank you so much. And listen, let's make it mandatory. Subscribe right. to Security Boss. Let's get like it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for that. Have a good night. So, Robbie, you're the only woman in the house. Do you, I know you didn't plan to be here. Are you okay being here? Or do I need to let you go? Oh, no, I'll stay here for a little while. I'm going to drop down in a few minutes because I have to tend to the children. You know, I, I know the man loves to hear that. I got to, you know, cook some food, tend to these kids. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay, so, Mel, how you doing tonight? How you doing? How you doing? Good evening. We're doing good. Good. It's good to see you. Hey, it's good Mel. to see you. up just a little bit. Mel can't hardly hear oh, you. Aaron, what's going on, man? Can you hear me, Claire? What's going on, yeah, my brother? You sound like you uh, away from it a little bit. Can you move in a little bit? Can you hear me, Claire? One, two. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Hey, SB. You know, I've been sitting back patient. That's all. Thank y'all for being patient. Oh, but, right. um, Dale, you, you were in there first. Go ahead and tell us what you think. Because, um, Rob B, she done laid the surface. And, it, you know, we still saying the same thing. You know, we want leaders and we want some accountability, which is the same thing we both, everybody's agreeing that's what needs to happen. So, Mel, tell us what you think. Well, remember the story you you just said, um, scary boss. Um, you becoming um with your first child, right? Mm-hmm. I tried to tell be in the chat. She missed that point. She focused on her part. That's what you was alluding to. You focus on your part, despite I don't know. B want to put blame on both. I understand that, but see, the point you was making, boss, was I hope Robbie would see that is, or oh, do you be free? You gotta focus oh, on your part. I got you. You can move on and find a better outcome. And Robbie, now, do you understand I, what I'm I, saying? Yeah, I do. And I totally, I totally got that point. But I think the part that you missed is that I was raised with a father. So my perspective on things in life is totally different from a lot of other women because they didn't have a father. The point that I was saying is this. Yes, I was wise enough to use vaginal contraceptive films and birth controls in case condoms broke or whatever. But I was tested and tempted several times during my journey by men that wanted to take me off of my God-given purpose and my God-given path. And I can tell you for a fact, men are very, very weak. In the bedroom, men will say to women, let me just put the head in. Men will say to women, I don't want to use a condom. So while, yes, I fully understand that women have to protect themselves at all costs. If we're going to have this conversation, honestly, we do have to acknowledge the fact that 
some men is out there and they're not just Pookie and Ray Ray's because whatever terminology y'all done came up for that, honey, that's not her pedigree or her stature. These are men with money, men with means that still didn't want to use nobody's condom and wanted me to have their child because I didn't have any. Okay, we so know, we're not going to sit there and act like that doesn't happen. It, it does. does. It does. It it does. But see, though. there's the problem. Wait, hold, on, hold on. Hold on, black man. Um, <laughs> male. Here's, here's the big problem right now, and I tell this a lot. And you know what? You're kind of proving my point, Raw B, because I say this all the time. The whole thing about women are the gatekeepers of sex, men are the gatekeepers of commitment. You have the women have the final say so who they let inside them. And you kind of proving my point right there by you no know, dudes that want to put the tip and be raw. You said no. You but have the power. Says you have the power. I mean, unless exactly. you absolutely, the power. and I agree. Exactly. But the point that I'm making is, men have control over their mm -hmm. semen before contraception, because a woman by no means can get pregnant by mm -hmm. herself. She's right. But exactly, you're right. But also, too, you have to allow that man to come inside you. Period. It's not a lot of dudes that sloppy with they seize that way. Yes, we do call so many dudes out. I don't rock with dudes like that. But it's not a lot of dudes that being sloppy with they seize like that. And stuff. Um, do you know okay, how many but... men don't know that you can uh, you actually are more likely to get a woman pregnant from your pre-com than you actually having a completed finish at the end of sex? Yes. Most of your yes. viable swimmers are in your pre cum and there yes. are plenty of dudes. Plenty of dudes. Yes, just like you know, just like you don't want to use no condoms and that happens. Yes, you gotta take responsibility that's for why that. That's I teach my food. daughters right now. My daughter 11, and I'm teaching her right now. Don't let nobody in your house. Don't and then when I mean house, I'm talking about vagina. I know we know what don't you're talking let, about. Don't <laughs> let nobody in your house that don't ain't pay, that ain't pay, that, that don't let nobody in your house that it does not that is not paying the mortgage <laughs> or that exactly. is not being there being a, a man and, and 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 married you if he's not a husband if he if you can't wake up every morning and say good morning king, don't let nobody in that house. But listen, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about Rob B right now, though. Shouldn't we still be pushing a message to the men that this could happen? Yeah. Yes, we push, we push it. But see, the problem is females, you know, they push it like it's a large percentage of men. Most most percentage of men are actually, they, they want to be married. They want to be um be chosen. They don't actually go up to females like that. They wait for females to come to them and stuff. And when they do get the chance to have a female stuff to come up to and everything, it's, it's like it's it's a, it's, a, it's a disaster. Like they hold them to a certain standard, and just like the other brother was saying, with the verbal abuse and stuff. But you know, I know females are use Russell Wilson as an example so many times. All the, everyone, why men should be like him? You know, I throw it back in their faces. Be like, you actually been through. You actually have come across Russell Wilson type more than two times in their lifetime. But male, I was Russell Wilson in my younger days with females. But male, there has to be something to this because Raw B's other point is the child support system is basically kryptonite or death to men right now because it's so plentiful and men are finding themselves in that position. So seeing that that's a big deal, shouldn't we still be pushing the message of men value your your sperm? Yes. Cause you know why? Because they be, they hear stories about the dudes that just pumping and dumping and leaving them and stuff like that. And I'm I'm sorry that that hap that happens some females like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't rock with men like that. But there's also some dudes that you know what? If the race relationship didn't work between the mother and the father, okay, they break up. He still wants to be there for his kids. Unfortunately, that woman used that kids as a leverage, as a power tool over that man. And child support is the biggest thing because. He does, he doesn't he does, he's not paying to the standards of what she feel like it he she should be paying. And I remember I think I heard it on Kevin Samuels last show um show when he spoke to a single mother. If you want to solve this, why don't you let the um men have custody of the kid? I agree with that. Of hold on, hold on that. one hold on one second, Mel and Aaron. We're gonna go to you. Before we go though, we want to read this um super chat from Gia. Thank you so much, Gia, for your four dollar ninety nine cent super chat. She says, "If our men started holding onto their sperm like they hold onto onto rings, huh, we could turn everything around." Y'all understand that? Hold yeah, on. she's saying 
they real picky with who they put that ring on. They real picky oh. who they commit to to get married to. But with that that fluid, honey, it's everywhere. It's like fountains, fire hoses. It, you know, it's really. <laughs> <laughs> but, but hey, but I'm gonna say this though, men. Listen, right now, men. Listen to what I'm saying. Do not, under any circumstance, go out here and shoot your sperm. Men, exactly. teach your sons this. Do not go out here shooting your sperm in trash cans. We what 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 we need to do as men is make it uncool to shoot up the club. We need to make it uncool and shameful to shoot up the damn club. It, that's what we need to do. If you shoot up the club, dude, you're stupid. And then on top of that, how your kids gonna look in this girl cock at it with bumps on her nose? Oh, stop! Hey. Up- <laughs> Black man, you listen. Hey, um, what are you talking about? Aaron, before you speak, um, Mel, do you have something else you want to add? Because I want to bring up, uh, I think, Grape. Yeah, that was the point I had before you cut me off. I had another point. Damn. Damn, I missed it now. I'm not You're getting old, Mel. You're getting old, Mel. Damn, no 41 <laughs> overwork. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> I mean, me and Roe be living in New York, man. We in the city. We live in the city on the go. <laughs> right, Roe be in New York. Cause people... <laughs> so, Mel, you can um stay in the back, and we're going to bring up. Yeah, uh, yeah. If not, I'm just watch in the background. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. we'll bring. Okay, we'll do that. Since, and so, um, thank you so, say, thank you so much, for here for your nineteen dollar ninety nine cents super chat. And he says, shout out to SB, um, UB SB Nation. Thank you so much. We get the money line song. Hey, ghost the machine in the building. Aaron, I heard you singing my song this morning. <laughs> you saw you saw me working. I'm sorry. Aaron, are you singing my song? <laughs> I'm sorry, it gets stuck in my head. I know, I know. But go ahead, sir. Go ahead and tell us what you think. All right, uh, bear with me. Uh, okay. So, so uh, talk slow. Talk slow. Then, I will. There, there was thoughts that uh, the people could not keep the commandments, right? Because they're unruly people. So we agree both men and women are unruly, right? But I will posit this. Men have put mechanisms in place to protect women a very long time ago. First, they gave verbal, stay away from these men. Stay, stay away. That's the first one. Second, we put systemic things in place. We put family court in place. In order to put responsibility on men, we garnish their wages and we throw them in jail. We did all that before it, like women start having these rights now that they currently have, right? We have not, since we don't longer have the property ownership of women that we used to have, they'll tell you, you guys used to own us, we couldn't buy things about men. Say, we have given them full power and autonomy back to their individual life, but they, know, they do not want to take full autonomy and power over any individual thing. So what I say is this, the men have been asking for two things specifically. Okay. Women have, uh, they have, they have marched and rioted to get equal wages and all these things. Although we have proven that their assertions are uh, unsubstantiated and that they do not, they're not underpaid uh, wage wise. There are many studies of why they do not get paid the same amount as men. And so I say that to say that, so it makes sense why women make less than men. And in the court system, it makes sense why men might not fight as hard just based on the numbers, right? So men have said this, women, we want two things from you. One, we want with this newfound power that you women have, your individuality, to update the family laws. We want you marching in the streets to show good faith to men. We want you to do that on behalf of us to show that you're dedicated to us because during your time of need, we altered the laws for y'all and we want mandatory paternity tests on children. Those are the primary two things that we have requested for women to do. And they, they don't want to do that because that might not benefit them. They will march and scream for everything else. But the things that the men have requested them to do in this newer time, because we're in a modern time, they, they're they not the same women back then that couldn't get jobs and generate revenue. It's different now. But they haven't tried to implement this thing and show good faith. So what has happened is it's an all out war and I, it's unfortunate. Oh, go ahead. I know I said a lot. No, no, no. I like this. Um, but with the updating of the family laws, I definitely like and agree with that. But I still think that you still still should be present and accounted for because you still can't send a woman in to do a man's job. So you still need to be there. So 
um, I think it should be something that we should do together. Now, security boys, I'm going to tell you, I got laughed off a panel the other day because I said men should be having sexual relationships in which they can structure custody agreements and parental responsibilities early on before things get crazy, just in case something happens. And because I'm a woman, yeah, because I'm a woman, it, that was just automatically dismissed. Now, I can tell you from facts, like I, I did that. I, with I my children. You. So we went to court. We actually put in agreements. We wrote contracts because that's how serious I am about my progeny. And again, a lot of people have not been raised how I've been raised. They've not been shown how to be litigious in order to protect the future of themselves and their offsprings. So we have to start teaching that number one. And I agree, Erin, wholeheartedly. Yep. There should never be years and decades and forever when people do not know without a shadow of a doubt who their children is. And I think a lot of women need to be held accountable in that manner, which is why I know that there's there the availability of DNA from 11 weeks old, because we were having none of that. And I was married. No, let's take this test so you can be fully aware and comfortable in knowing that this is your child because i'm fully aware that there's a lot of women out here that are you know they thotting and bopping or whatever so you know i understand men's conflict in that arena but again it's still calling for women to lead and i gotta tell you honestly women do a lot and it's like right now is an optimal prime time in society for men to be drafting lawsuits getting those lawsuits escalated to the supreme court right now with the supreme court overturning roe v wade or potentially overturning it that lets you know that the conservative supreme court may have more leniency in father's rights so why are we not doing that why is the conversation solely on what women need to do i just want to see black men having these conversations where they upwardly mobilize each other to do better. Stop focusing on vaginas. Stop focusing on what women do. Focus on the politics and the power. But I gotta go because I gotta take care of the kids. Okay. Thank you so much, Robbie. And we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for that. But I want to do these super chats. I'm gonna get you, Robbie. Right Don't get her. She's good. Okay, so listen. No, the first $5 super chat is from Doberman. And black men, I cannot Get I a got good you. On I that got you. Too. too many, too many black women have uh, have suffered from gender dysphoria, a reproductive hypoagency. A woman risks her life, future, etc., to produce a child. Okay. Oh, oh, this is insane. This is what women were created to do. Women were created to have children. What do we? I don't understand that one. Right. We got another one from um, Eugene. Still, uh, if you do that. Yeah, yeah, I got you. There, there it goes. <clears throat> Okay, yeah. Uh, when doing, when uh, doing, going. I'm sorry. When going out on a date, never let sex be the first priority. Never let sex be the main objective for a date. Absolutely, I agree 100. percent That's very good. So listen, before we go on and we go to ghost, um, to ghost, we're going to first. We're going to entertain Aaron's two points. Aaron, I totally agree with what you're saying. The only point I'm with Raw B on the updating the family law, I got something I want to add to that. I think the, the family uh, law and the child support system should be the same everywhere. I don't think it should be one way in Texas and one way in North Carolina. And I, I just think it should be the same everywhere. I think there are a lot of updates that need to be done to it, but I don't necessarily think that the women should be leading, but I do think the women should be out there advocating with the men, putting in the laws and finding out what is good and what works. Um, again, though, I also think that a part of this new update of the family law should be that 16, 17, 18 year olds should be mandatory incentivized to be married if they're making babies. I also agree with that. Now, the mandatory paternity test, I'm there with you from before the baby even gets out the hospital. We need to know who the mom we know who the mom is. We need to know who the daddy is. I agree with that. So I don't think this is very tough. But I still don't think this is, should be put solely on the woman to go, you know, to walk this out. I think it should oh, be. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to withhold the, the, this thing because. You got to say. What men are men are literally, literally in, in the weakest position because y'all have full voting power. 
Y'all don't have half of a vote. Y'all don't, don't have half of a vote. You have full same voting power as a man. And y'all not going to not vote if we, if we propose a law. Y'all not going to sit back and say, we'll abstain and let the man decide. So it's insane, these assertions that are being made that, well, women are not leaders. Y'all don't want to be second-class citizens either. I would like to propose y'all be second-class citizens and, and, and put y'all back in a position to where men have full autonomy. But y'all would not like that. So to sit here and say, you're asking women to lead is insane. That's not what I said. What I'm saying I is didn't women, say that. Did I say that? I know, no, that's no, no, not true. Okay. What I'm saying, I'm saying is, women, oh, oh, oh. Women okay. have been empowered is what I'm saying. Back when the men put those systems in place, they were not empowered. We okay, needed listen. Up Aaron, we're talking to two different women. Listen, the woman that's going to do, the women that are going to do this with you are the women that we're getting married, that are, we are trying to get married. Does that make sense? Am I saying that right? We're not talking about these single mothers or, or baby mamas. We're not talking about them. We're talking about women that advocate for men that want the nuclear family in place. These are the women that are going to implement this with you. Mm -hmm. These are also the women who have obviously accepted the fact that I am no man's equal and never want to be. I'm a lady and I'm a woman. So we can't talk. This is not meant for those people. They can't hear you. They have been incentivized by the federal government for a, a long time and they have gotten quite used to it. We're trying to update it so this can't happen anymore. So we're no longer talking to them. Now they yep. may be, they may push back, but we're not, they're not going to walk with you. They're not going to usher in or give any solutions or suggestions on how to update it. That's not going to happen. Oh, okay. That's fine. But here, here, here's the second problem with that. Women don't want to separate themselves from other women. We, men have tried to, to posit a position like this. Pookies and Ray Rays, we don't want to be associated with them. We, we've actually presented a position. Women are still saying, no, the single ladies, the single mothers, we, you still got to help. Them. So there is no separation from women that choose to abstain and wait for marriage. There's no separating y'all at this point because y'all still want to advocate for all of women. We need a separation for men to be able to identify. Like men are trying to give y'all the ability to separate. But what I I'm hearing from women is, no, no, you can't do that. Well, what are you going to do with these women? Y'all need to get back in the community, save these women. I need y'all to separate from them and make it clear to us. That's all I'm like. I'm trying to be reasonable. Well, you're saying the same thing I'm saying. I lead it, I let off the show by saying that we're trying to pluck the ones out because if they don't have anywhere to go, they're not going to leave that influence. They're not going to leave that sisterhood if they don't have anywhere to go or if they don't have an example on what to do. They're not going to separate. So you're right in that aspect, but we're trying now to get them to separate. And I appreciate this. I think this is something that can be done. Add a lot of things to it, but it, it's a good start. And those are the only two things. I don't think this is very difficult. But with this also, we got to have a separation so we can understand who we need to be compassionate and have empathy for because now they're trying to be different people versus lady bashing and all that other stuff that that we're being accused of doing so but before you have say anything let's do this um super chat and then we're going to go to ghost um it's from kb rebuilding together thank you so much for your ten dollar super chat and um black man can you do that for me yeah, yeah absolutely uh maybe it's just me but didn't i hear aaron ask for women to lead the men maybe aaron can clarify that aaron did okay. you say women need to lead the men no, I, I, I added context and clarity to that, but I'll, I'll, I'll add slightly more quickly. Uh, when we say men are leaders, I think that's a disingenuous statement that women throw out there because they don't want to be held accountable for anything. I want to make sure that's clear. That's an assertion that I have made continuously. But as the men leaders, we have given you a job to do something. And we're saying, we're telling you, we need you to do X, Y, and Z. That has nothing to do with saying we want you to lead. We gave you a directive as leaders. What you're saying is no F you leaders, uh, you do that stuff because you're the leaders. So it's like, what's the point of being a leader? <laughs> no, I, I agree with you to a degree again. Um, and you're exactly right, because in, in my home, my personal home, my husband, he is my leader and he has given me the job to lead our business. So I agree with what you're saying. I don't know how that translates to the world. And that's something that we're going to have to figure out because that's the problem. How does that look in translation? That's the problem right there. But again, because you can't you can't identify the ones who even can hear that message because we do adapt to men. We do adapt and adjust to what you're saying. But again, we need people to take that. Men have to be in that position to actually delegate that job. And I don't think we're seeing it. OK, so listen, we got the money line for KB. 
So guys, listen, when you're coming into the live, make sure you're giving me the thumbs up. Make sure you, if you have not subscribed to the channel, you go to Unsolicited Security Boss, the Security Boss Unsolicited, and also to Black Man Unfiltered and Ghost. Thank you for being here. I haven't seen you in a while. How are you and the missus? Oh, we just good. We good. We good. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and I apologize. Like I told Black Man United last night on his live, I've been working on some different projects and I've been off in my own little space. But I saw this and I said, let me jump on here right quick. And um, I hate that I'm jumping on this late because, you know, I'm I'm trying to get some order in my life where, you know, every night I'm nine o'clock, I'm shutting it down. It's time to, you know, because I'm trying to be more healthy in my life. Go to bed early, get up early, got it, got it, got it. But let's say this. Um, I, I don't like and listen, go with me with this. I do not like the term men are leaders, women are followers. Not because it's not necessarily true. I don't like it because of the connotations that come with it. Because what, what if your man is a dummy? What if your man sells drugs? Is he the leader? Is he supposed to be the leader? You ain't supposed to be with him, but you are. What you going to do? He's I still, like the term. He still leads. <laughs> right. I like the term head and neck one can't deal without the other if you're in a relationship now if you out there just doing your thing out the back of you know out to the club or whatever that's an entirely different question we're not even talking about those people because those people are not in a relationship which is another thing that we have to define what is a relationship just because you met a dude and you've been with him for two weeks and Come you know he jumping up and down y'all ain't in no relationship man because he might Leave you for the girl with the next biggest booty, and she, she might leave you for the guy with the next biggest Johnson. Y'all not in a relationship, okay? Yeah. Now, the bigger point, and this is why I jumped on here because we need to start talking more about solutions and not about the problem. We know what the problem is, right? But a lot of us don't want to call. As old folks say, a spade, a spade. We don't want to say what the problem really is. And I like to look at myself as a drone. I go up in the air and I look down at the whole situation, right? We like to think that the child support system was built to, you know, make some kind of, you know, balance between me and you. That's nonsense. The child support system. Let's go back and do the, do the history on it. Now, I've been a paralegal for 40 years. And my, my thing is family law. That's my specialty is family law. Fam and, and in family law, child support existed because it was just another way for another people to get more of us inside the criminal justice system. It wasn't because they wanted women to get no money out of the child support system. The average dude that they put on child support don't make enough money to make it that much of a difference in a female's life. They, yeah, he ought to be doing something. Okay, he give you $20 a week. Is that life-changing money to you? But if he don't give you that $20, $20 a week, guess what? Now you're taking his baby up to the up to the penitentiary to see him every two weeks. Yep, look through that glass wonder. You see what I'm saying? Yep. That wasn't what the deal is, and it brings me to my set, my next point, right? We, as content creators, especially us older folks, right? Now, I don't know how, how old Aaron is. He might be 35, might be 40 or whatever. But, you know, those of us that's a little bit more mature, we screaming into the wind. We got 99 people watching this live right now. Tasha K get 1,500, and she ain't talking about nothing. Nothing. No disrespect to no disrespect to Tasha K. Don't come after me. You see what I'm saying? They're content creation out, creators out there that ain't talking about nothing ever, and they get 15, 16 thousand views. Yep. You see what I'm saying? My thing is this: if you be the female, and this is my advice to young dudes and young females as well, 
ask her to turn off her phone. Mm. If she can't tell you that she gonna turn off her phone, I mean, turn it off now and turn it off until we leave. The, well, you might be a rapist or something. Oh, sorry, about the R word. You might be someone that's trying to take advantage of me. My phone is, you know, my protection. Yeah, well, people, you know, survive before they. Were, why are you dating me if you think I'm that type of dude? Turn your phone off. If your girl can't go five minutes without having her phone in her hand, posting on Instagram, posting on Facebook, she ain't the female for you. That's one point. And we got into this position because feminism is always been a white woman's game. It ain't never been for us. They used you for your vote to get them what they wanted and they left you high and dry you to deal today. with this nonsense that they done left you with in your community. Now, we got to understand as old folks, times has changed. A uh, black man said earlier at the beginning when you and him were just kicking, it was like, yeah, I know 55, I know 50 year old grand man, I know 35 year old grandmothers whose mama wasn't married. She not married. What's she going to tell her daughter about being married? She going to tell, because all of her, uh, we're going to say all of them, a lot of her relationships have been with men that ain't ish, as we like to say. And our sons that we're raising, a lot of the females that get them trapped up, these are females that ain't ish. That's not our issue. Our issue is not who's this and who's that. Our issue is how are we going to get around this? What are we going to do going forward to make sure that my grandkids, my great grandkids, your grandkids, your great grandkids don't go through the same nonsense that we're going through? First thing, content creation is cool, but let's do something in the community. Each one of us probably knows of at least two or three community centers in our hood that we can have meetings in face to face. We have to start doing more face to face in person therapy, not couples therapy. Relationship therapy. You've been married for 27 years. I've been married for 17. You know, it ain't been all, you know, honeysuckle and roses. And everything. We had issues that we had to deal with, but we made it through. And we need to try and give that same, you know, knowledge and wisdom to other people. But it's hard to drown them out in this echo chamber that they live, that they in. They either in the manosphere or they in the woman's fear. They red pills, they blue pills, they gray pills, they yellow pills, they pink pills. And if you only listen to people who think the same way you do, you will never get out of your situation. And it's hard for you to break into that echo chamber because you're not saying the same thing. But it's different when I got you in front of me and I can say, black man, you got five kids but four different women. When you gonna change up? What is it that you lack in your character that makes you think that this is an okay thing to do? Yep. Well, man, she was pretty. Well, man, she had money. Well, man, she had a nice ride. Blah blah blah. All the classic reasons why we give that black men impregnate black women and black women allow men to impregnate black women. There is no you wrong. It's more on the dude than it's on the girl. It is, hey, it takes two to tangle. Like I always tell people, it, you should have thought about that when you was ooing and on. Mm. Yo, <laughs> let's let's right here for just a moment. Let's go over these super chats really quick before we uh, lose them. Um, Black man, I need your help. This is We Unlock. How you doing, We Unlock? Thank you so much for your $5 super chat. Go ahead, Black man, and read that for me. Oh, We Unlock, We Unlock. He says <laughs> we, we are and should be men and women the leaders to be balanced right. and that's good that's a good point that's exactly what i'm talking about thank you aaron, for that. look at aaron hold it aaron. I know it aaron. I feel this you, right bro. here is from um no cap frenzy frenzy how are you okay so go ahead and read this one for me too black well, man. black women can do simple things simple things like letting the uh what is his baby daddy vet the daughter's boyfriend for approval but they don't for obvious reasons. Hmm. Reezy, you get the super chat. You get the uh, money line song. And thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
rolling up, we know the cry. Money the line. I'm a run it every time. Give me my going up, we know the cry. Yeah. Look, I realize it's Monday. And I realize we've been here a while, but y'all got to pep it up a little bit. What is wrong with y'all? Ah, anyway, there was another one, back, man. Let's see. It was one more, I think, here. Um, let me see. I've lost it, but we will try to find it and let you read that one for us, please. But, you know, and I want to make this last point. And then sure, I, I'm going to jump off. Like I said, right. old man, I, I got to go lay it down. But um, an old man once told me, this has been years and years and years ago. And he said, as far as relationships is concerned, because yeah, I, I talk about I've been talking about this stuff for years. He said, Look, he said, we was fine. And you mentioned, you know, you know, how you, your grandfather had six kids outside, you know, that and somebody else said in the chat, I don't think we paid attention to it. To, hey, yeah, you've got five, you know, dark skinned kids and one light skinned kid. So <laughs> grandma ain't you know, she ain't absolved of all sin either. She, you know, she wasn't a saint either. But be that as it may, what he said was, he said, man, we was okay until we got white folks in our business. Hmm. We were straight until we decided to let white people in our business. And what he meant by white people, he meant the welfare system. He meant the courts. He meant uh, charities. He met people that came in and said, I'm going to teach you how to cook a healthy meal for your child. Meanwhile, all of her kids is bigger than the people who coming into the house to teach you how to cook. You know what I mean? And that when we get other cultures, they don't have to be white people. That's, you know, we ain't going to say it's racist, but, you know, it ain't got to be white people. It could be Hispanic people. We could be Asian people. It doesn't matter. When we put other people with different cultural mores involved in our that's business that's where we end up going wrong we need to band together and figure this out for ourselves with no outside help not the court system not nobody but that's just the way you know I, what, you I, know what? No, I, I was i was riding that train with you till you got there i'm not finna blame the white man for decisions that we made oh wait, but see that's 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 a, that's a conversation right. for quite a few different episodes of this. <laughs> Another day. You see I, can't do it because I can show you where it is. No, no. I can show no, you how I, it is. I, no, you can show me that some people have agreed to acknowledge and accept what the system in the world has to offer. And I can show you where there's a whole lot of others of us who have not. Not so, that many. We're uh, not talking about the few. We're talking about, no, we're talking about the many who do. No, it's, 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 no, because what you're saying is, is that that means that the that means that the people who are who have been incentivized are the actual face of our community. And that's not true. We'll agree to disagree about that. Like I said, we can do an episode about that. If you bring your evidence and I can bring mine, we can kick Look, it about that. It, it, it's not about it. the blame I mean, of the white we're, we're, we're living it. You're living it. I'm living it. It's just, it's the, they're not the face of our community. The people who are being incentivized are not the face of our community. So, but listen, we're we we gonna, we gonna agree to disagree, and no, we're not gonna do agree to disagree. You're gonna come back at a later time, and we're gonna talk about this another day because yeah. there's no disagreeing to disagree, it is what it is. But, um, thank you so much for being here and tell your wife hello, and I hope y'all doing good. And I'll see you soon. We are, thank we you. Are. I will tell her that. All right, thanks. So, um, black man, can you please read that for me? Yes, ma'am. Um, Let's see, Zuri F says, I like that at Paris Millen uh, tells black girls to not wait around till black men get it right. The black nuclear family is a lost cause. Sorry, uh, boss lady. Oh. This is the divester. Oh, I know she told me she was earlier. Aaron, isn't this the one that was loving you too the other day? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 there's, whoever that is very fond of me for some, for some yeah, reason. Considering, huh? Um, you know what? I hate that you have divested from your community, but guess what? If you love where you are and you found someone to love you, I'm not mad at that, but I'm not going to let you hate on our black men. We still going to lift them up and our black women. And we hope that they find what they need within the that's, culture. But again, you love who you love. You know, I can, be, yes, sir. Did, didn't you tell us a story about a young kid that had actually deleted somebody and when he was in court 
it hit him and he peed on himself. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. The reason I bring that up is because that young kid did not realize the ramifications of his decision. Right. Because a lot of young men don't know any better either. We we presume just because an age has been assigned to an individual that they right. understand the ramifications of their actions. We right. need to we need to protect the black men. They do not care about him. I'm telling you, as a black man, a son of a of a black woman. They don't care about black men, young black men. They are not protected at any levels. These kids, if you look at the black male specifically, they are literally, literally in, in the worst position of everybody else. They're, they're in the worst position. We have to find a way to support them. Join That's me. the most important thing at this point. I can agree with that because obviously there was no, this made this young boy had no examples. And two, you know what you got to add to that? We're living in a time where everything is virtual. You know, I don't know if they actually know what's real and what isn't until it becomes real. So you're exactly right. I agree with you on that. Um, who is that that just came up? Scam, how are you? And Pink, how are you guys doing? What's going on? Hey, it's Anna, good. Uh, I love it when you tell the truth. I'm sorry? <laughs> you no, know, I love it when you tell the truth. I'm here for the people. Supposedly, I'm supposed to come in here and say we're gonna just to get the community back together. All we have to do is, no, that ain't what it is. But <laughs> divestor Zuri F or whatever name. This is my thing about the divestors. Okay, so whatever reason, because there's plenty of black men out here that's productive, and actually a lot of them are in this space. The men, mm -hmm. but they've asked for something. Hey, excuse me, may you please go to the gym? No. Excuse me, can you be nice to black? No! Can you cooperate and work? No! Can you not have another man's kids? And no! Okay, fine. You're going to do what you do. So the man has said we're either going to be single or we're going to look for spouses, women who actually want to, you know. So I guess these women decided we're going to go and seek the white man or we're going to seek the Spanish or other. Right. So, and so I assume these people in these spaces who are diverse, they're married. They have a 30 year old white man who looks like Superman in his prime and he makes a lot of money. I'm just wondering is what he told her to do now that we're married and we're going to go and produce and, and we're going to, did he tell her to get on the internet and go hunt for manosphere spaces and sit up there typing notes three hours per night in each channel? Mm. That's what they told him to do. I don't know. And I don't think we should waste our time on trying to figure out what, the goal is of a divester. Um, we, we, we can only, you know what, like I said to her a moment ago, um, she keep coming over here, which I appreciate her being here. We're only going to set an example for a woman and for men. And if she should change her mind in any way, then this is where she'll get it. And, you know, if she finds love somewhere else, uh, you know, I, I, good, you know, but if she changes her mind and sees that there are a lot of value and a lot of potential in black men, then it'll be that it's okay. You know, you can't DP, you can't waste your time on trying to um, convert um, grown people that way. You can only sow a seed and then somebody else has to come by and water it. And guess what? She's in a watering pond being over here. So if she coming over here to hear what I have to say about being married in a nuclear family, I appreciate it so much. And that's, that's about all I can add to that. Um, I am so sorry, but I cannot see who just came in. Family family value. Value. How are you? It's good to finally meet you. Hey, how are you? Good to meet you as well. Hello, panel. Um, I, my contacts are, are turning on me today, and I cannot see. But before we go get to you, I want to talk to my brother, Hink, down here. Hink, how you doing, and what's going on with you? I'm good, security boss. How you doing this evening? I, I'm good. I can't see, but I'm good. <laughs> I got all kind of glares. I think I put my contacts in backwards if that can happen. But sometimes it's like that. It's life, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Man, it's just it's just crazy here in these situations, man. I mean out joined. I'm telling men all the time, man, protect yourself at all costs. I know. You did good the other day. You did very good. <laughs> I, I you know, I tried, I try to pump the show up, you know, give you a props, put you Thank out there. You. I appreciate that a lot. Oh, no problem, no problem. But you know, the main thing is uh in 2022, these ladies, I I don't think they want to really get married like you say they do, Scary Ball. I think they like the idea. You know, they, they like the uh the whole hoopla between having a big wedding 
inviting all the girlfriends, be the bridesmaid, and you know the hell of a reception, so we can all have a good time, drink, you know, party a little bit, you know, maybe even a honeymoon. You know, what I'm saying, look, look to go on an extravagant trip someplace. But when they when it's time to do that work, I don't know if they're ready. I don't know if they built for it. I hear you, and I, I heard what you heard. The, too, I, I, I hear you. The work I hear that you want yeah. her to do. I heard you the other day and I, I heard exactly, I heard you and I know what you're talking about and I heard what you were listening to. And that's very interesting to me because um, we need, we really need to be able to think past the end of the year because there's a time coming where um, a black man or any man is going to be very valuable to us. And we're going to wish that we did whatever we had to do to make sure you all were taken care of and you all were there to protect and cover us. Now I don't, excuse me. Listen, my job and who I am is is whatever I want. I, I kind of think like a man in, in some aspects, where is it? You all do what you all want to do. Y'all put your mind to it and y'all make it happen. I I entered my marriage that way. I'm going to make it happen. And I, it's going to be what I need it to be. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, going, I'm not going to let the world dictate how my marriage is going to be. And when I hear people say things like that or that it's a fairy tale or it's Disneyland, guess what? Maybe, but it's 27 years later and I'm going to keep it Disney. <laughs> you know, I'm going to keep it that way because that works for me. I, there's nothing wrong with living a fairy tale if that's what you want to call it, but it's still working. So whatever you, you know, whatever you hating about it, it's still what you make it. So I, I, I when I hear people speak against it like that, I'm like, really? What, what else you got? What else we got? We got this big old world right here that's offering so much. Um, all this hitting a lick. Um, diseases and all these things that you talk about that you tell these young men to protect themselves from. Is that what we got to look forward to? That's not very interesting to me. So I'm, and I'm, I'm willing to share with other ladies and women who say they want what I have. So that's what I'm here for. And I'm going to continue to do it no matter how many uh, women or men talk against marriage. The nuclear family is the answer. And if we really want some change, then that's what we'll be. Um, that's what we will incentivize. And that's what we'll get back to. So and I, I totally agree with you. But the, what what I encourage the men to do is have the tough conversations with these chicks, man. Yep. Don't beat around the bush. Don't sugarcoat shit. Get straight to the point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're not a fan of weave, if you're not a fan of, of wigs like my man Scam likely says, if you're not a <laughs> fan of the fake eyelashes, if you're not a fan of your lady being on social media overly just abusing social media, then have that conversation. Yep. Talk about it. Yeah. Put scenarios out there. But if you have that conversation with a front, that's gonna be the right. That's gonna save you a whole lot of time and heartache. A whole if, lot. Like, yes. If she's not willing on sacrifice those things, then you don't need to be with her. Nope, because she gotta wanna she be does. a wife. You gotta wanna be a wife. It, it it comes with a lot. It comes with a lot of sacrifice, and you have to adjust and adapt to that man and that relationship that you in. It might that might not mean you can't ever be on social media, but for them for a first few years for me it was five you got to devote that time to building up that relationship and being one with that man i mean you know, i'm like this though screw off unless it's for your job or for your career or whatever you, yep what what needs why does that need to be your priority you're right why? It not good, it's not a good influence you're right i agree with especially you especially if, if, if you're having a problem with it, if you're on it way more than than any. <laughs> If you own more than a teenage daughter or your teenage son, that's, that's bad. Or if you just as much, yeah, that's not good. So somebody said today, ten hours. Somebody said today over ten hours, and I was like, "What? Ten hours on a social media? <laughs> you know, I don't know, Hink. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, to you know, you know, fortunately, you know, for social media now, you you can know what apps you're on for how many hours a day. And if you look at you, you're over on there 12, 24, something hours. Mm -mm. That's a long time, man. I mean, why? What, what, what's your purpose? Like I said, if it's not for your job or your career or whatever you, you know, you're doing for a living, then why? Right. You're right. I agree. I agree totally with you. I do. So listen, um, stay right there for just a moment. And family values is good to meet you. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm really loving this conversation you're having right here. Thank you. Um, what would you like to add to it? 
Well, um, what Hink said about women, modern women these days, they don't, they want the marriage. And I think a lot of that reason as well is for status. They want to be able to say that I have a husband and someone wifed me. I was valuable, valuable enough to be wifed. Um, they want the wedding, not the actual marriage. But what I came to say was a solution that I believe would help men to, you know, get the nuclear family back together as a whole is you guys don't realize how much power you have by giving attention. Women love and need attention. Like I even see it in my daughters. I put them on a new dress and they're running to daddy because they want to get his validation. They want to hear, you're pretty. They want to hear that. And men give their attention out, you know, so freely. And it's made women, you know, attention hungry. Hence why Instagram is so huge. A lot of these sites are so huge because they're getting attention from all types of different men getting this validation and it's blowing their heads up. And they think that they are valuable because of you know all the attention that they're giving and they don't think they have to have to do anything more so with that attention become you know you start to get see the promiscuous women the women that are out here becoming single mothers because they don't have the right standards anymore because men aren't quite putting their foot down saying okay you're pretty you're good looking but i need more and a lot of that has to do with you know sex they men are sexual beings i understand that and they they want to spread their seed but at the same time we ha we have to understand that with this liberation that we have right now is causing a breakdown in our families and although i i am the first one to call women out to be accountable but since we're talking about what men can do men could stop giving 304's attention Dearly beloved, Ooh. <laughs> we don't give hoes attention. That's not a solution. They get back at the restaurant. It's not a. It's not a solution. That's Why is it that's not a solution? Be, because w the focus is trying to uh, take a man whose nature is to go for women, not necessarily to uh, identify the personality and be like. Oh, I wonder how smart this scientist is. That's not how we're designed. So we're trying to suppress a man's nature. And the solution is, well, maybe they should stop following their nature to be driven towards women. And what we have proven, we can take data and extrapolate it over a thousand bajillion years. That's never going to happen. But aren't we asking women to suppress their nature, to not want and put themselves out there for the attention that they're receiving? Or are we saying that that's fine, they can keep doing that? We, we have done absolutely nothing to suppress women's nature except I know that. put them on birth control. Although most of the time it's either their choice to do so or it's a medical reason. We have done nothing to suppress women. We've actually elevated women and empowered women to the point where women now say, you know what? We should run these companies instead of these men. That's what they said. So, um, said. family values. Let me add to something. Somebody's because can y'all mute for me, please? But family values. Let me say this. Um, what we can do is this: we can elevate the women so they'll have more value with themselves, so they won't succumb to the men in their nature. Because the problem is, is that women want the attention and they feed on it. Like you just said, they feed on it and we're emotional. So we think we're getting very genuine men as partners or people to give ourselves to. And they're turning out not to be that, but it's too late. So we have to in some way and still in men in women, I'm going women first because their boxes. You know, that's where their value is. If they hold on to it, they can grow up and be wives or more better at making decisions because, you know, once they have sex, everything gets kind of cloudy. Right. And but I at understand. The time, at the same time, we can too instill in men 
that it ain't all about sex and you need to be more more selective with your jewels because once you give away your power to the wrong woman now you 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 just messed up because just like we can't control you know we can't consider we, we don't know who the 304 is who she who managing what we also don't know the man the young man that's out of control that that doesn't have like aaron said earlier we haven't we haven't uh we don't we can't we can't identify him yet. We can't identify the separation of what's good and what's bad yet amongst both genders. Well, I guess the men are now stepping up, but within the women, we don't know what's a 304 and what a woman looks like that is going and wants to be married. Cause right now they're still hanging out together until they decide to separate and say, okay, take a stand. I'm, you know, I'm no longer, I'm not on code anymore. I want a husband. I want a wife. I mean, excuse me, I want a husband, I want to be married. Then then the men are saying, I can't identify. I don't know what you are. So I'm gonna treat you just like the next one. And that's what hey, he's saying. Security Bob. Yes, sir. Love, men love the window shop. We <laughs> yeah. love the window shop. We'll even test drive it. Yep. But if we figure out it ain't no good, we ain't gonna purchase shit. And see, that's the part. That's that's when the women have to be more exclusive with who they're sharing themselves with. If not anybody, they used to be security boss. Huh? They used to be women. Used to be the most exclusive thing ever. You couldn't touch them. They'd be hard to get women. They, they used to. Be, they used to carry themselves in a way where men had to go jump over arm and a leg, go on a thousand dates. Women could actually make men wait. Now they're saying, "Oh, we we can't wait because men won't let us wait." That's crazy to think yeah, about. That. Well, what's happened is we're, 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 we've gotten a little delusional in thinking that sex doesn't affect us emotionally. There's a little delusion going on. We, we're thinking that we can handle it. And it's still not. It's not true. You bond like that with somebody as a woman. It's a real thing. That's why I guess that's where the bitterness and the anger. That's what we're seeing. The bitterness and the anger of being emotionally connected with somebody or several people and them still moving forward. I made my first mistake with the first man. <laughs> I was a virgin with the, my child's father, but he still wasn't right. But I could have, y'all couldn't have told me that, that, that I didn't love that man or that he didn't love me. You get what I'm saying? So that's still going on. But now women are so, are so liberated in sex because of the influences that we see and hear that they really think they got it under control. And we, I'm here to tell them as an older woman, you don't. And you you will ruin your emotions, your thought process. You'll be delusional and not understand what's going on. You will miss your opportunity to actually be with a husband or, you know, have a man that is for you if you don't account for what you're doing and change your mindset. But again, <coughs> everybody's not. We don't know. I don't know who these people are right now. So we're just putting a message out there. I love the solution. You know, empowering the men is what it's always about. We got to make sure that the men understand we value them. We also have to let the women know that the men are not their enemy because right now it looks like the men are their enemies to them. It looks like it. But the part I'm, the part I'm getting confused on is, listen, if they're your enemy, why y'all still sleeping with them? <laughs> you know, y'all still, you know, y'all still mixing up right here. If they're your enemy, why, why are you doing that? You know, so it ain't no real enemy. So now we're playing a game. So we have to actually just um, walk the situation out. I don't have all the answers. I mean, that's why I call on you all to to help us out. So, so, um, Mr. Life, how are you? What do you have to add to this? I'm doing great, young lady. This is my first time on, so I saw that you was on tonight. So I've been watching in the background, but I've been working Thank on my you. own channel. So, I, but I've been always checking you out. I, we, me, my channel, and all the guys on my channel, we all subscribe. So we try our best to support as many as possible. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah. That's what we do. We, we, we got to build each other up. But um, what I got to add is somebody, I, I think it was Hink. I, I, man, I got about three points here. Uh, and you said something about a, sex complicates things for a man. I, that's somewhat true. The thing is that post nut clarity is where is when a man decides on how far how far that could go at that point in time before he actually gets with the girl um he's probably would do anything men men go be go way above and beyond to get it 
that first piece, that second and third, they begin to get that clarity and just like, eh, I don't know if this for me because now he can see clearly all the stuff that she was doing that he couldn't see prior to actually getting up in there. I think that's the thing right there, right? So when, when the main thing that men need to start doing right now is something that I talk about all the time is qualifying questions. You got to start asking these women, women qualifying questions and you got to look for buy-in from the women up front. No, sex is not a buy-in. Sex is sex is baseline right now because women have driven down the cost of sex. Uh, 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 let's be honest. Uh, sex, a woman's body was the gold mine, right? That was the canary inside the coal mine. Now that's no longer the option nor the case. Now, Megan, we can we can at we can have Pookies and Ray Rays right now getting their share of women, uh, and they can get it in the abundance, and they can get quality women as far as looks goes, and can and so the that cost has been driven down. So. How women need to do this, and how women need to move, they need to do better. In, they need to do better as well on their qualifying questions and being brutally up, and being brutally upfront, up right up front. There's nothing wrong with asking a man is he looking for marriage and all these other type questions, but you got to do it in a lot more subtle way. Because if because if a man figure out what you want, he's going to try to give it to you just to get what he wants, and then he's going to back off of it. That's just how most men move. A lot of men will do what they need to do to get that sex, and then just move on. So, but back to men, the discipline is the main thing that we need to practice, mm-hmm. and it also need to actually be purpose driven. I think a lot of men are proud to thirty. I think 35 is when your testosterone starts to go down and and that's where you really type and that's where you really start to catch clarity of who you are and what you need to be doing as a man. Until then you running off a of full testosterone, you trying to get every girl that comes by your way. It's the it's the old thing about the old bull and the young bull. The old bull sits up at the at the hill and says that and the young bull looks down and says that hey I want that real fine one way, way down there and he just runs through everything and the old bull takes his time and do what he has to do and get, kiss them all because he has purpose and vision and I think a lot of young men just operate off of that testosterone just want to get girls and get money and don't and don't have any life goals and anything that they are really trying to achieve. And if you really want to have a woman on your side, I think you got to have vision and purpose as a man, because once again, well, not once again, I made it to 40 years old with no kids before I got married. I dated a lot of, I'm not going to say I dated. I had fun with, a with my share. <laughs> I had fun with my share. And then when the quality woman came along that I knew I couldn't continue inside that life path, I, I, I married her up and been faithful ever, ever since. And it's been like 10 years now. So, so, and that's the thing. The woman has to put herself in a position when that man comes along and to know what to show that man at the same time, because she showed me that she was a quality woman, that she was a diamond, not a diamond in the rough. She showed me that she was a diamond at that point in time for me alone to take myself off the market because I'm six, five brown eyes. I could walk in anywhere and probably get them. I'm going to just call it how I go. All right. All right. <laughs> I never had a problem. I never had a problem. All yeah, right. I see I see a dark hole in this. What? Okay. If you're telling the woman, like all the other issues, mainly the big issue is this. Men don't see women as wives. They don't, or they don't see women who are qualified to be spouses or women who are looking to have, have loyalty or possess the values to be a wife. No, tell me why you think that at all, at all the women that you see, how do you come to those conclusions that none of these women are meant to be wives? Um, do you see what they're doing out here? No, I'm, I'm, this is a real question. I'm asking, I, because yeah, I can't say, true. because listen, I said, I, um, let me think about this. There were 150 comments, 150,000 comments. I'm sorry. No, excuse me. There was 150,000 views. There were a hundred negative. So somewhere in there, there were some positive. How would you identify them? Besides the fact that they were making, I mean, if they were real women just walking down the street, how would you identify them to be women that made the positive comments versus the woman that made the negative? I have no clue what you just said. Huh? Huh? 150 comments. What comment? 
Okay, like I did a post. You remember I told you I did the post. This is how this all came about. It's because I did a post. And from the post, I talked about single single mothers. And every, a lot of them got really upset. It has hundred over 150,000 views on that post. Uh -huh. It almost went viral. And within that, there were 100 comments that were negative. But within that, there were, let's say, maybe now about 50 that were positive. All of them commented. How would you know if all those women we met, you know, we were walking down the street or we in an area, all those women were there. How would you know which ones made the positive comments? Uh, I wouldn't, I guess. Exactly. Uh, because you, 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 you paint a brush and you're saying women's these days. I think I heard you say that they when men don't think that women these days are wives or they want to be married. I'm yes. saying, how do you know that? How are you identifying that? Okay. Hank, and Aaron, Mr. Life, and people in the chat. Do you see a whole bunch of wives walking around? Yes or no? Or is it very few? Do you see loyal women looking ready to get on board? I've been scrambling to find a black man so I can have a black. Is that what y'all see on a daily basis? Let me let me say something. I'm, I'm going to say something for Hank myself. There was one that either was to the right of him or above him the other day fighting hard to be a wife. Was she not? <laughs> fighting hard. And it was a panel of, don't get me to line, it was a panel of six, I believe. And at least two of them were on there fighting hard to be wives. So we got two. Well, it, but listen, it was only, listen, it was a panel of six, I think, of men and women. And two of them women were fighting hard to be wives. I'm just telling you, I'm just asking you. How do you know what is good and what is bad without saying that we're not identifying with it? Because I, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not happening, but I'm just saying, how do you know when, when we just, you know, even this morning, even this morning with Aaron, you were there too. I don't know if you were there this morning, even this morning on Aaron, I saw at least three, three women on the panel of Aaron. How many did you have this morning? Eight or 10? Uh, at least mm -hmm. this morning on a panel of 10 that wanted to be wives. They were desperately wanting to be wives. Well, one was desperately wanting a husband. Am I right, Aaron? That is true. There are a lot of women that want to be wives. But and guess what? Uh, she she was so right. consistent with it. She said she was willing to do just about anything, even her edges. You I agree. So I like her. Just She's trying dope. to figure out how do we identify with it if if we're not saying anything, if we're just being really quiet and we're just in the environment. How do we know whether this woman is a wife or wants to be a wife, um, or want to be married or not? That's I'm just asking that question. These are the tough conversations. No, it's These are the tough conversations. According, to, I mean, if men are saying we don't see wives, then they don't see why. But my point, the point I was trying to make is was this. If men don't see women as wives, they're not seeing it. Things are what they are for a reason. Raising the value on sex. So telling all the women, you know what? We're going to hold out on sex. How does that fix the problem? Because now they're just women who aren't wives and, and men can't get sex either. But at the end of the day, there's still no wives. It'll stop all the babies from popping out. But fixing the problem is women being wives. Men will, men will be there. But DP, I just gave you, I just made your first statement untrue. I gave you two examples of two different scenarios on two different days and two different times where I just, it was at least five women, five out of eight women. I want to say it was eight, maybe nine women, five out of nine women were wanted to be wives and wanted to be married. And I forgot about Bella. So there were 10 women. I mean, excuse me. There were six women out of nine women that between yesterday Sunday afternoon and this morning with Aaron that wanted to honestly to be wives. Scam like you need to slide it to the DMs then. Oh, they were fighting for it. If them, <laughs> were, if them, <laughs> wait, if them ladies are ready, you better slide into their DMs and, and see what you can do and get in contact with them. But I'm you know whether they're ready or not, I don't know. But I'm telling you the message that they were giving out yesterday with you and today with Aaron. Uh I mean, Bella and, and Black Beauty and, and Natasha, Natasha was there and Brittany B was there. I mean, come on. All of them were talking about they wanted they wanted white husbands. And I don't know about Tasha. I know she may be already, maybe already married. But I'm saying she was there speaking 
as an advocate of uh, women for women in marriage. She wasn't talking against it. And then yesterday, I don't know the young lady's names, um, Hank, that were on there with you. But again, they were talking about, well, why can't we just get married and be happy? Why we can't put the family back together? So he was talking about uh, Courtney, uh, Kelly, and Amber, and uh, Lady T. So it was at least two of them that were that were advocating for marriage. Strong. Well, all four of them are. All four all, of them. So, all four of them. So scam likely that's four DMs. You need to be getting that. They on IG. Reach out. Well, it goes back to one thing, right? I think I mentioned this. <laughs> yeah, man, I think I mentioned this up front. You got to ask qualified questions. And and back to my man, uh, we have a group and we have over like 50 women that's buying desperately trying to be wise. And they definitely, they own, they own some pick me is to where everybody else notice what's going on. And the guys are staying away from it because they see what's going on. But I think it goes back because of me being inside sales, I kind of get one thing. It's a law of numbers and you, you, you got to go prospect for these women. You, you just can't expect them just to fall inside your lap, your lap. This isn't like car sales, right? Where they come in and then you try to find them. No, it's like business to business sale. And you got to go, bang on some doors and try to find out what's going on. And then you got to ask those qualifying questions to see, are they available to be closed on and to see if that's a good buy at the same time. And I think a lot of men miss that point, right? You got to go through a whole lot of crap to get to one good one. It's like finding a diamond, man. I keep saying that you, you got to go tear down a whole mountain and dig holes inside the mountain just to get one diamond. And that's hard work. It's not easy. I'm, I'm not trying to say that this is an easy thing to do. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of communication. It's a lot of getting involved and getting out of all. It, it's a lot of that going on. I have been involved with plenty and guarantee you I made it to 40 for, I made it to 35, I think. And, and I found my wife. And just like I said, I, I've been through it all. I've been cheated on. I cheated. I've done multiple things and they've done multiple things to me. But once again, it goes back to one thing. It's about you asking the questions, you digging deeper, and you trying to find a person that's a woman that's willing to get on your vision. And I go back to the vision thing again. It's, it's hard to find a wife if you yourself don't have a vision because women will not attach to you and they don't look like a wife because your vision is off. And once you begin to fully articulate who you are as a man, women just naturally progress. They will flock to you because I walk into a place and they, and just start talking and they still come. I'm a married man. I still have my chances. But <laughs> that was outstanding. That was yeah. good. Right. I hear you. So let me ask you a question and we go. I hear you, pimp. I hear you. Pimp. I'm six five with brown eyes. You hear this, right? Yeah. Six five with brown eyes. I say it all the time on the show. <laughs> almost three hours and we have lovely miss family family values here and we're gonna let her i hopefully we want to let her in the show because we've been here a long time and listen i appreciate you all so much i want to hear more about these 50 women that are available and want to be wives that is like <laughs> awesome to hear Okay, that's an option for you, Scam Lightning. <laughs> Figuring this out. There's no back but, chat. I would I'll put notes in the back chat, but there isn't one on this on this app. So okay. okay. That's all right. So man, uh, I mean, I'm, 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 I have never Scam heard like that. So this is this outstanding to hear. But uh family values, if you would just um end the show for us. You the you the lovely lady that's here, and I appreciate you so much for camming up because you know yourself how hard it is to get young ladies to cam up. So I'm so glad that you were available to do that and you didn't mind doing so. I'm trying to unmute. You good. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So um I just wanted to piggyback off of what Mr. Life said or uh, after everything you guys just said in my honest opinion if we want to find solutions is going to i mean or if we want to see the family get back together it's going to take generations because it took generations to get us here so with that said i understand what scam likely is saying you can't really find made wives out here anymore you can't you can find women who are willing and who are trying and who are working on themselves to be wives but yes. you probably won't find wives out here because we're not being raised to be wives anymore. That's our job to do now and raise our children to be wives and husbands. So I say all of that to say, 
if you want to you, you want to be married as a man find a, a woman that's willing to get on your program a woman that's willing to listen and follow your lead and then you do whatever it takes or whatever she has to do like maybe if she needs therapy or she needs to talk to other wives but lead her into being what it is that you desire her to be because it's um it's almost impossible to find wives nowadays here in the western world it is it's just it's it's just not out here anymore so i believe that we just have to work together right now we're in a place of healing and right now it's not going to be perfect for us because our, our our parents and parents parents effed it up for us so now we're here trying to fix it this generational curse and it's going to take work so i say all that to say it um we should just all work together and don't expect perfection because you're not going to get it very good thank you so much guys for being here and listen we're going to continue this conversation because i like solution talk i can get y'all to actually listen to each other <laughs> otherwise we button it but listen, all you all have a good night. Aaron, you know, I appreciate you being here all the time. You're my co everything. DP, I got a woman for you. I can't sit still. But you got to be willing. King, thank you so much for being here. And Mr. Life, it was so good to meet you. I want to know more about all these women. Come to our, uh, come to our, come to our Facebook group. We got my out group. Stay in there. We're going to find you. And um, family, family, family values, thank you so much. Y'all have a good night. Chat, we love you and we'll see you soon. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it's Security Balls Unsolicited. Thank you. Let's take it back for this started. You want the love, I don't got it. You screaming, stay, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different with distance we roam in the zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. But instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though he was screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts say too are scared to us. You're off. Sorry, Mom. I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in a daze Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove your I away I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Give up what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had, days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars, we were poets at sunset. It's funny how love can fall out the foreground, get pushed into the back of your mind. We used to twist the spliff and laugh and relax. Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reason, so I ask, does forever ever happen, or is it always fade to black? I can't say, no, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.